Welcome to Williamstown, Massachusetts, Farley Lamb Field on the beautiful campus of Williams College. It's the Eves and the Jumbos coming up. It's NESCAC football, the home opener for the Eves. They come on 0-1. The Jumbos won last week over Trinity. They're 1-0. I'm Rick Sassone. Welcome to the Northeast Sports Network and my broadcast partner today, Matt Freitas. You know, Matt, it's an overused cliche, but I'm going to use it. What a beautiful day for a game. It is fantastic outside. Both teams are going to be looking for a big win. The Eves are coming off of that loss, and they want to do their best to come out and have a 50% record coming out of week two. Well, a heartbreaking loss it was in the last 30 seconds of the game. A heartbreaking touchdown at Middlebury. You know, I talked to Coach Mark Raymond yesterday in his fourth year, and I said, Coach, uh, uh, tell me about last week's loss. And he said, you know, it was a tough loss. Uh, we just put it be behind us, and we come out. They had a very good week at practice, and uh, says they're ready to go. Yeah, they are definitely coming off that tough loss, but there are absolutely positives to take from that game. It's going to be a tough week taking on Tufts, who just took down the three-time reigning NESCAC champions last week. It will be a big defensive battle, but both teams are going to look to try and get this win. You know, last year's game, Tufts was the winner. Uh, out there in Tufts, 28-21, uh, great game. They were tied at half, and uh, then you know, tied at half of 21, and then in the third quarter, a touchdown pass thrown by a running back, Dom Borelli to Jack Dolan for the game-winning touchdown. New quarterback this year at Tufts this year. Uh, ja Jacob Carroll comes in. He's 6'2", 195-pounder from Birmingham, Alabama. He takes over. Ryan McDonald lost to graduation last year, man. 17 to 28, 187 yards and two TDs against Williams last year. It's definitely an interesting quarterback battle today with Carroll in his second college start. Um, Coach Savetti was coming off of a big interview after the game in which he said that Carroll actually hasn't played a game in about five years. We're going to take a pause. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back here live with kickoff. Welcome back to Williams College, Farley Lamb Field, Rick Sassone and Matt Freitas bringing you all the action on the Northeast Sports Network. It's the Jumbos and the Tufts today, and uh, we're ready for a good one. Our officials today, I give you the quick rundown. Our referee is Anthony Florio. Josh Tobin is the umpire. The line judge is Joe DeGraziano. Field judge, Daryl Canero. Headlinesman, Matt Luce. The safety judge, Peter Collins, the back judge, is Andre Colland, the clock operator, Arthur Courtney, and the play clock operator is Rhonda, Ron Bilo. So it looks like Tufts is going to receive the kick, and the kicker for uh, Williams putting it in play is Schreiber, Schreibstein. Schreibstein's going to kick it off. His regular kicker had a pretty good week last week coming in, so we're ready to go, and wow, college football is underway. Nezcak opener and John Andre, the speedster, stands back on his old goal line. He's a deep back, number 89. And there's the kick, and it will be Andre on the seven yard line. Here's Andre, brings it up to the 10, looks for a move. Nice move by Andre, cuts it up the middle, gets out to the 20 yard line, and the Tufts Jumbos put it in play, first and 10. Fantastic return by John Andre, the sophomore out of Needham, Massachusetts. Definitely looking for a big game today. And John Andre, the namesake of the British general. John Andre. Little history lessons Little out here history in Williamstown. Lessons. He was hung down in Tappan, New York. Sure, he was 
Got in with that uh, Benedict Arnold trader. So we're ready to go. So come out the quarterback, Jacob Carroll, the new starter, number 12. Single back to Carroll's right. Here's motion. And there's a handoff around the corner trying to get outside, and he doesn't make it to the line of scrimmage. Maybe got one yard, and that was number six, Frank Roich. Great tackle by number 48, Colston Smith for the East. So he might have got a yard. The PA said no gain. I'm going to give him one in second and nine. Roche, a 6'2", 190-pound grad student out of Arlington, Massachusetts. Single back set now for Carroll. And Carroll's going to give it, and the ball's on the ground, and that's Pedrini, the starting back. It's still loose, and the Eves have it. The Eves have it. An early turnover will swing the momentum here from Farley Lamb Field. Wow, big play. Tough play for the quarterback out of Tufts. Just a fumble right on the handoff, but the Eves are super pumped to take over the ball. They'll have a short field situation. So that'll bring out third-year starter number two, the junior, 6'1", 195, out of Duxbury, Massachusetts. Last year, good year, had eight touchdowns passing and eight touchdowns rushing, and that is Bobby Mameron. So Mameron comes out, the single back in the backfield. It'll be number 19, Dan Vaughn, out of Fort Pierce, Florida. Twin receivers here to the near side. The wideout is Frank Stola. He's a stud. We'll talk about him in a second. First and 10 Eves in the red zone. First offensive series from home, and Vaughn's going to get the carry. Vaughn goes over to the right side, down the hash mark, gets a couple. A player to watch in this game is definitely number three, the wide receiver Frank Stola, junior out of Northport High School in New York. On the season, he already has 151 yards and two touchdowns, and he'll be looking to capitalize in this game today. In one game, and Frank Stola, i got to give him some love. He did a color comedy. He did what you did last year for lacrosse. I mean, he was right up here in the booth, and I said, maybe I'll do a football game. I was joking. I wasn't sure. I was hoping, and here we are. And now we're here. Yes, second and eight now from the 18-yard line, just inside the 18-yard line. The Eves wearing their purple home jerseys, gold numbers. Little play action. Mamoran's going to throw, and it's complete on the near sideline. Oh, no, it isn't. Incomplete. So he did not hold on to the ball, Stola. Thought he caught it. Looks like a good play, but Mamoran's going to be looking to just move on to the next down. So it's going to bring up third and eight now. Number 44 is going to come into the game, and that's Mark Bedard, freshman tight end out of Barrington, Illinois. So we're going to have three receivers to the near side in this long, third and long. Stola is the middle receiver here on the near side towards us. Mamoron in the gun with Vaughn in the back. Vaughn to Mamoron's left. Fake to Vaughn. Mamoran still has it. He's going to take off. He's got some room. He's heading towards the goal line, and he is in the end zone. Bobby Mamoran is on the board. The East strike early, 6 0. That's Mamoran's first rushing touchdown of the year. You can see the boys in purple are getting super excited to take that lead. So a big lead at home, and that'll bring on Cyberstein for the extra point. The holder will be Vaughn little swinging gate formation on the extra point. Still can't figure out why they do that, but it uh, looks nice. So right from the lacrosse circle, a goal crease. Cyberstein right down the middle. So it's 7-0 here, courtesy of a tough turnover in the red zone. The Eves are on the board. This is Nezcac football on the Northeast Sports Network. Welcome back to Williams College, Williamstown, Pennsylvania, Farley Lamb Field. Rick Sasso, Matt Freitas, our producer, Jeff Vasilio, bringing you all the action today. Cyberstein's going to kick off. Back deep, John Andre. Cyberstein, toe in the leather. Good kick. 
Andre's going to take it out of the goal line, uh, end zone, one yard deep. Andre makes a move, and there's a nice open field tackle on special teams. Special teams play by Alex Demel. So Demel came up, made a nice tackle. I'll tell you, if Demel didn't make that tackle, Andre might have had some room. To have the entire left side of the field completely open, great open field tackle by Demel. So in case you're just tuning in, this, this is the second offensive possession for the Tufts University Jumbos. Mike Padrini fumbled the second play from scrimmage, and Williams took over and cashed in. So let's see what Bobby Carroll can do now. Carroll's going to hand off, and it looks like it's Padrini. Padrini keeps the legs, Chuck, and gets out over the 20, out over the 21, just outside Padrini over the 21. The On the last drive, we saw an uncharacteristic mistake from the captain, Mike Padrini. And quarterback Jacob Carroll will be looking in his second start to shake off the jitters from that first drive and lead Tufts towards him to more points. So second and six, a good four-yard gain on first down for Padrini. Second down play, Padrini comes in motion. Padrini's going to catch the, get the ball out of the flat, but it's thrown at his feet. So a bad throw by Carroll. It's going to bring up third and six. Got to like it if you're a Leafs fan. Luca Puzzi was in hot pursuit if that catch was going to be caught. Beautiful, beautiful facility here, Farley Lamb Field. If you haven't been out to Williams College, you need to get out here. A little gratuitous plug. I love it out here. I love coming here. What if I didn't have to work? I like coming out here. We call it the gem of the Berkshires. It is. I love it on the Hoosick River and the beautiful Berkshires. Back to pass. Carroll. Carroll looks. Fires over the middle. He's got a complete receiver wide open. First down over the 30. And it's caught for a first down. And that's number 80 made the catch. Win Winton Blunt. Blunt, a senior out of Fairhope, Alabama. Listed as a fullback. And came in the game. I think he was split out on that play. And third and six, they're able to convert. New set of downs now out to the 32. Carroll is going to give to Padrini. Padrini straight ahead and he's wrapped up. So far, the uh, Eve's run defense has been very well. They've been fantastic. They're looking for a big day today. So Oscar Obnoski made the tackle. He's a senior, 6'3", 210 out of Lexington, Massachusetts. Lexington High got in there and made the tackle. Second and 10 now for the Jumbos from their own 32. Carroll in the shotgun. Carroll drops, three steps. Carroll throws, and it's incomplete. Great coverage. Number 21 was there. John Wax, and the freshman waxed him. He was on top of him. Fantastic play out of the freshman from Belmont Hill in Massachusetts. So that's going to bring up a third and long, and I'll tell you, when you play defense, you love to have these third and longs. Oh, absolutely. So Carroll's looking over at the sideline along with Padrini trying to get the play. They got it now. They got the third and 10 player from their own 32 shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right of the formation, which is the bottom towards us. Carroll drops. Carroll looks. Carroll throws. Puts a lot of air under. He's got a receiver out there who cannot make the catch in his hands. And that was Roach got behind the graduate student got behind Wax on the play. He was there, could have came up with that. Would have been a heck of a catch. Fantastic play from Tufts, but unfortunately ends for a drop for them. We'll see if they'll be looking for a punt formation. So the punt return does come in for the Eves, and that's gonna be the ever dangerous Frank Stola. Coach Mark Raymond yesterday said he's a special player with great hands. He's the full package of anything you'd want in a wide receiver. And back to punt is Patrick Walsh. Walsh had 10 punts last week against Middlebury. Wonder if he had to ice his leg down during the week. So there's the kick. It's a high hanging spiral. Good kick. Stola is going to call for the fair catch and makes it. And Stola's hit from low. I don't know if he was blocked into him. The Williams faithful here on the sidelines want a flag, but they're not going to get it. So Williams will take over second offensive position. A little longer field this time. They're definitely not starting out in the red zone again, but it's going to be exciting to see what the Eves can do in the open field this time. 7-0, 11-38 left to go here in the first quarter. Nezcac, NCA Division Three football on a Saturday afternoon in the Berkshires. Leaves are starting to change. Last day of summer today, is it fall tomorrow? I always get my calendar mixed up. Mamoron in the shotgun. 
three receivers to the top of the formation. Little play action is going to throw over here to the left, and it's Stola. Stola makes the catch and prances out of bounds. Stola has been Mamoron's number one target over the last couple of years. The two juniors have great chemistry, and they'll definitely be looking to number three as a big target today. So first reception for Stola. Picks up a quick five yards on first down. Going to bring up second and five from the East 29. Receiver wide out to the top of the formation, Justin Nelson. Stoll is down here to the bottom. Tight end with a slot back as Mamoran barks out the signals. Mamoran's gonna play action. He's going for Stola. Stola, he's got him just overthrows him as Stola had a step back there defending was Nolan Ostmo. Incomplete, so it's still third and a manageable down. Good good place to take that shot. Absolutely. It was a great sign for the East that they were able to break into the backfield there with Stola. Mamoron just missed the throw, but we'll be excited to check out if he can hit that later in the game. So third down. Single back in the backfield, still in that shotgun formation. Two receivers to the top of the formation for the purple-clad East. Corner blitz, he's coming, they block it. Mamoron goes the other way, but the corner's gonna get in there. And finishing off big number 96, Kevin Quissembing. So Quissembing got in there and they came with that corner blitz. John Wax was coming like a ball of fire and it was the right play call, but uh, there was nothing there. Uh, Mamoron had to come back this way. Exactly. And he ran into all kinds of trouble, so it's going to bring up fourth down. Mamoron is well known in the NESCAC for being a mobile quarterback. That was a great play by Tufts, making sure to keep him in the pocket and not giving him room to run. So Schreiberstein going to come in the kick. He's standing on his own 18-yard line in the ever-dangerous Major John Andre back on his own 35-yard line. Kid can fly. Many people consider him to be more of a smaller receiver, but the dude flies. Oh, booming kick! And Andre had a chance to catch it, and then at the last minute, let it go very dangerously, living dangerously. 10.03 left to go, first quarter. Eves up by seven here on the Northeast Sports Network. Thanks. Back live here, third offensive possession for the Tufts Jumbos. There's a handoff straight ahead, and there's that smothering defense. A host of purple clad Eves, led by Drew Mahalik. Marietta, Georgia, we're in there. You can see number 45, TJ Rothman, getting himself into the backfield there, the junior out of Boston College High School. Coach Raymond, or sorry, Coach Savetti of Tufts stated that he is one of the best inside linebackers within the NESCAC and he is definitely worried what number 45 can do to his game plan. So they'll be looking to take him out of the game. So a loss of two brings up a second and 12 for Bobby Carroll and the Jumbos. Carroll drops, looks, quick drop, throws. It's O.J. Anderson with the completion. Anderson with the move, gets outside. Good defense to shut him down, got about three. It's gonna bring up third and nine, long, long, and long situation. Anderson is being covered by number 16, Drew Michalik, the freshman out of Walton High School in Marietta, Georgia. So let's see what the Tufts offensive scheme can be here on a third and nine from their own 33 yard line. And I hear some banging downstairs on the stands. This Eve's home crowd, good crowd today. Stands are practically full below us and they're getting into it on this third and nine. The Purple Cows definitely love their football. Carroll drops. Carroll's gonna throw, airs it out. He's got nobody out there and it drops incomplete. The closest person to that ball was Ben Anthony, the senior out of Albany, New York. And Anthony almost came up with an interception there. He couldn't quite hang on to it. Ben Anthony, one of the captains of this East defense, has been a stud over the last couple of years, a consistent starter over the last three. Anthony also plays lacrosse in the spring. And he plays lacrosse very well as well. Known as one of the best D-mids in the NESCAC. So 8.34 left, and oh, we got a penalty, and they decline it, so ineligible. So even if the play was good, it would have been nullified by penalty. 
but the fortuitous incompletion for the Eves, they're able to negate the penalty and bring up the fourth down, which the ever dangerous Frank Stola will be back in to return it. And in comes Patrick Walsh, as I mentioned, he at Middlebury last week, he punted 10 times. So his second punt already here, and we're not even seven minutes into the game. And he booms it. Stola's gonna have to drift back to his right. Stola makes the catch on the own 32, and down he goes. You could see Colston Smith getting real close to going for that block there, but Walsh was able to get the punt off anyways. Chicago, Illinois junior Daniel McMahon, the first down to ensure that Stola had no return yards on that, and that was the case. So the Eves come out now. They lead on the scoreboard, 7-0 with 826 left to go. Here in the first, you're watching NESCAC football on the Northeast Sports Network. Rick Sassone, Matt Freitas, and our producer, Jeff Vasilio. We thank you for joining us. So here's Maine Moran now in the shotgun. Stola's all the way out here to the left. There's a good fake and a throw out to the right is complete and driven out of bounds. Number 80, Tyler Spezio. Spezio, big kid, 6'6", 230. Tight end out of Morris, Illinois. Spezio, only a sophomore, will be looking to make a big impact in the future of the East football team. Yeah, he'll probably put on some weight, too. They'll bulk him up a little bit more. Probably get up to, like, 250. That's a horrifying thought. Woo, big tight end. It's a couple yards, second and eight now. Mamoron in the shotgun. Ringing the cowbells. And there's a little draw play, inside draw that goes nowhere. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage, Joel Nichols, the freshman running back out of Canisius High School in Buffalo. You, know, you can see the Eves playing quite a few freshmen today, definitely looking to build for the future, while at the same time in the contention to get lots of wins this year in the ever-difficult NESCAC conference. So we're going to see a third and long, third and eight for the Eves as the play is in now. Clock moving towards the seven minute mark here, the first quarter. Bobby Mamoron is the quarterback, the third year starter for the Eves. And he's a junior, so he'll be a four year starter next year if he stays healthy. And there's a handoff on the outside, and Vaughn's got room. Vaughn has a first down. Vaughn's across the 50, knocked out of bounds inside the 45 yard line. It's going to be first and 10 for the Eves on the plus side of the field. The sophomore, Dan Vaughn, only has 55 yards on his career thus far. He will be looking to make that a lot bigger today against the Jumbos. So big run inside the 45. They operate on the plus side of the field. Kyra, Kyle Horahan comes in motion, set. Going to throw the outside, stole it. That pass was a little late, and Wax made the tackle. And very fortuitous for Mamoron that that wasn't picked. He hung that out there a little late. And I know he's going to be the first one to say to himself, man, I threw that late. It's tough when you have a receiver as talented as Frank Stoll, you're always going to want to throw it to him. But in situations like that, sometimes it's just a little late. See, you know, so we mentioned his name a few times. It was Wax is on Stoll again, the corner. Wax doing a good job. Tough assignment. Frank Stoll, top of the formation, split out to the right now. Second and ten. And Vaughn is hit immediately and wrapped up. Wow, what a play. Big number nine, Jovan ne Nedkovich. 6'3", 220 out of Washington, D.C., the sophomore. Boy. That's the reigning NESCAC Defensive Player of the Week right there. Coming off Ooh. a game with three sacks, makes a big tackle in the backfield to push the Eves back to the almost the 50. He started in the backfield on that play. Wow, that was impressive. So loss of yardage, loss of a couple, third and 12. First play from behind the sticks for the Eves, Although they're in tough territory. Got to come up with something here on third and 13. Fake draw to Vaughn. Mamoron rolls out to the right. Mamoron throws and he's got to complete to Spezio. He's knocked out of bounds short of the first down. So it's going to bring up fourth and one. So what are you doing, coach? Coach Matt Freitas? If I'm bringing up a fourth and one, I am going for it here. You want to be aggressive against the Tufts, uh, Tufts defense. That's a fantastic team, and you want to make sure you're getting ahead early. But it's Coach Raymond's call. Uh, I think he's listening to you, Matt Freitas, because the offense is still on the field. 
So hire me as a coach. Hey, there you go. Well, you got a future. You know, you got to finish off your lac lacrosse thing. I'm going to ask you about this whole student athlete thing. Oh, exciting. Too. Okay, Mamoron in the shotgun, fourth and one. Big play for the Eves. Looks like trying to draw them off sides. Now they snap it. Mamoron gives it. Fakes to Vaughn. Mamoron's going to throw. He's got Stola for a touchdown. Frank Stola, fourth and one. Burns, wax, wax, got wax. 13 nothing Eves. Fantastic throw by Bobby Mamoron up that right sideline. Stola with his third touchdown reception on the year. Set up by a fantastic catch by Tyler Spezio for 11 yards. That is his career long. That is the second catch of Spezio's young career. Fantastic drive by the Eats. You know what made that play? That was an unbelievable play fake by Mamoron and Vaughn. I thought he actually had the ball. He put it in his belly. Young kids, if you're watching, when you play quarterback, I even see it at the National Football League level, some of the fakes are terrible. You're not going to freeze a linebacker. You can't freeze something in the freezer with a bad fake, let alone a linebacker. Cyberstein drills it through. 14 nothing Eats. You're watching Nezcat football on the Northeast Sports Network. So welcome back to Williams College. The Eves open up a 14-0 lead here. We still have 5.03 just left to go in the first quarter. Cyberstein ready to kick it off. And back deep is John Andre standing on his own goal line. Toe into leather, end over end. Andre about the four. Andre straight up the middle. Now he goes over to the left. Andre still looking to get outside. Andre has a seam. Andre's across the 30, out to the 33-yard line. Good return by John Andre in there to make the tackle, the special teams tackle, Paul Harshbarger, number 34. So good good field position. The way you want to come after going down, giving up the second touchdown, good field position, John Andre. They're definitely hoping Andre gives them the momentum that they need to score a touchdown for the end of this quarter. Yeah, you know, I tell you, 14 nothing. you feel the – it's been all Williams, courtesy of the big turnover early in the red zone, and then the nice pass – Carroll drops back, screen pass, complete to Padrini. Padrini has room, perfectly executed screen. Padrini's into Williams' territory over the 50, and that was a nice screen play. Great tackle by the freshman, Drew McKayley, also. Now a little hurry up, hurry up. Four receivers, quads, little slip screen. O.J. Anderson, we got some good blocks. There goes O.J. Anderson with a seam, closing down quickly. Was T.J. Rothman, the junior. Rothman was there to present that any further, so the Jumbos are ready to go. Again, a gain of six yards. Could have been a whole lot more there. This is the first spark of life that we've really seen from the Tufts offense today. That might be scaring the East defense. This hurry-up offense will definitely get them tired. Clock is rolling. Second and four. I call it a long four for Tufts. They're in East territory. There's Padrini. Padrini goes over the right side, wrapped up after a short gain. Close to the first down, but short. Colston Smith, the sophomore out of Ridgewood, New Jersey, makes a tackle. So a big play for the defense here, third and one. This is a big down for both teams in this game here. As the home faithful begins banging the bleachers again to encourage the defense. Tight formation under center. There's a handoff. Padrini straight ahead has it easily and more. Padrini across the 30 down to the 26-yard line. The sticks will move. It'll be first and 10 jumbos. And jumbos are in a hurry, man. They're going to make us work today. Right on the ball. Absolutely. Josh Wax with a great tackle there, the freshman corner. And we got a timeout on the play by Williams, I would believe. They didn't say it is Williams. So a Williams timeout. We'll take it with them. 325 left to go in the first. The Eves over the Jumbos, 14-0.
Welcome back to Williams College. We're ready to go. It's first and 10 for the Jumbos. They're threatening now in Williams territory, the 26-yard line. Carroll drops back. Carroll pumps. Carroll's going to throw the end zone. O.J. Anderson is there for the touchdown. Touchdown, Jumbos. What a nice throw on the post to O.J. Anderson. Anderson makes the catch. 5'9". Talk about a small receiver. 5'9", 155, number three. But he could play. That was the second touchdown of his young career. Fan, fan, fantastic play and a beautiful throw by the second game starter, Jacob Carroll. So that'll bring up Matt Alswanger from Stanford, Connecticut, the left-footed kicker. We got a late personnel substitution here. Somebody on the extra point team getting out there late. Snaps a little low. The holder's going to run with it. He's looking for the end zone for the two-point conversion. It's John Andre, and he has it. So a botched extra point. I think it was a botch because it was a low snap. Andre, I think, could have got it down, but he's so athletically talented. He said, you know what? I'm going to run this in. Definitely didn't look like a scripted play, but if it works, it works. Number 89 gets it in for two. Yeah, I just can't see. Let's snap it on one hop to the holder on a fake. I just don't see that being a scripted play. But Doesn't seem like it. You never know. So 14-8 to eight is the score. We'll stay right here. Northeast Sports Network live from Williams College in the beautiful Berkshire Mountains nestled in the Hoosick River Valley. Just an absolute beautiful place. And full slate in the NESCAC today. Amherst is at Colby. Middlebury at Bates. Bowden at Trinity and Wesley and the Cardinals taking on the Continentals in Clinton, Hamilton College. All in the NESCAC today. They all started a little bit before us, all 1 p.m. kickoffs. So the Eves looking to even their record today and at 1-1 one and one for that heartbreaking loss at Middlebury last week. And now we got Stola and number 13, Justin Nelson, back deep. This all wingers gonna tee it up. So three touchdowns here in the first quarter. High hanging kick end over end. It's gonna be Stola on the three. Stola is up to the ten. He's got a couple blocks. Making a nice move on the outside. Gets it back to about the 19 yard line. Good coverage by the Jumbos. Jonathan O'Neill, the sophomore out of Cupertino, California, was down there to make the tackle. Wrapped up his legs very well there. Eves are looking to start their offense from about the 19. So first and 10 from the 19. And, you know, that's a big touchdown and two-point conversion by the Jumbos to keep this game cut the lead more than in half, cut it from 14 to 6. Now here's a full house shotgun, two backs in the backfield, got a slot receiver. Horahan's now going to go in motion. And Mamoron's going to keep it. No, he handed it off. Nice little fake on the outside. Doesn't get anywhere. Lit up on the play is Joey Nichols. Nichols breaking the tackle early just to be taken down still behind that, behind that line of scrimmage. So the Jumbos make a big stop on first down. Nichols did get about a yard, bringing up second and nine for the Eves from their own 21-yard line. Three receivers to the near side, left of the formation. Mamoron wipes his hands, looks for the snap. And there it is, and the handoff goes, no, Mamoron keeps it. Mamoron, big hole, first down. Mamoron into the secondary, out over the 40-yard line. Bobby Mamoron with a big run. Bobby Mamoron is definitely feeling dangerous today. His passes have looked sharp, and his legs have looked even sharper. So a 21-yard gain by Bobby Mamoron and the Eves are operating from out over the 40-yard line. Three receivers to the left of the formation. Mamoron's going to look to the right, throws a little screen, and it's to no one. Way over the head of the intended receiver, Joel Nichols. I'll tell you, Stephen Timmons, the linebacker from Tufts, number 55, looked real close to getting an interception there. The East offense might just be lucky coming off of that play. Well, I would agree with you, Matt. Uh, that play was uh, had trouble spelled all over it. And I just think, I, I think what happened was Mamoron threw to a spot. He, he couldn't have seen right where Nichols was because he overthrew him by so much. You don't normally see that on a screen play. So it's second and 10, still manageable, on 42-yard line, trip receivers once again to the left of the formation. 
Single back, fake, and it's batted down. And there he is again, Jovan Nenadovic. And you mentioned he was a player of the week last week? Or? NESCAC defensive player of the week, coming off of a three-sack, five-tackle performance against the Bantams. He might be working on week two today because he's made a couple good plays here early in this one. So third and ten for the Eves. And, boy, you got a feeling if the Jumbos could stop them here and get the ball back, old Mo might have shifted a little. Absolutely. This momentum can be tough for the Eves. They need this drive right now to make sure that this game stays in their favor. So Maymoran takes the snap, hands off Vaughn straight ahead. Vaughn got two, needed ten, so that'll bring on the punt team. Vaughn carries to the 44 yard line. So Cyberstein's going to come in and kick it away, and once again, John Andre retreats back. Andre's inside his own 15-yard line. Boy, put a good return here. Can put the Jumbos right in business to try to tie this game or take the lead. Cyberstein hits it. It's going to be off to the right. Andre's going to come up, and Andre calls a late fair catch, and he makes it. So it looked like he had a little bit of trouble with the sun there. Great job by Colston Smith, who got real close to the returner there, but did not hit him for that penalty. Yeah, and it was really hustling down there, and that's something that doesn't show in the box score, Matt, is that hustle play getting down there, forcing the fair catch, because with Andre back there, you never want him to get a good return. Exactly. It's all about the hustle for that special teams unit on, in purple. So the Eves will come out again, or the, the Eves on defense. Bobby Carroll, the first-year quarterback for the Tufts University Jumbos, motion in the formation. They throw to the left. It's Armstrong. Armstrong makes the catch, wrapped up outside the numbers almost immediately. Got a few yards, though. Tufts seems to be taking advantage of this slot short-passing offense that they've been running today. The Eves have not found too great of an answer for it. Most of their big plays for the Jumbos have come off of those type of plays. So got a long three yards, maybe four. Close to four yards, so we'll call it second and six for the Eves, or for the Jumbo, as I should say. Carroll's going to hand off to Padrini. Padrini running to the left. Padrini's hammered down. The big hit, the big hitter, T.J. Rothman, and you mentioned him at the open, T.J. Rothman. T.J. Rothman, fantastic linebacker. Coach Savetti says he's one of the best within the NESCAC this year. Funny enough, him and number 55 on the on the Jumbos, their linebacker, Stephen Timmons, were old high school teammates, so a great linebacker battle that we could be seeing today between the two old BC High Eagles. Wow, what a heck of a defense they must have had over there at high school with those two fellas in the, with the linebacking core. Padrini goes in motion. Carroll's going to throw. Looks incomplete and not even looking for the ball. Ben Anthony was in hot pursuit of that one coming on over, but number 21, Josh Wax, had some great defense coming in, covering the ever-dangerous Brendan Dolan. So Dolan was, yeah, like I was going to say, I didn't get finished to get it out. Of it. Dolan didn't even, wasn't even looking for the ball. It's a little like miscommunication play, there. Tough one. Three and out. We got the end of the first quarter. The Jumbos are going to have to punt, so Williams is getting the ball back to start the second quarter. NESCAC football on the Northeast Sports Network, 14-8 Williams.
Oh, there's a bad snap all the way back. And the punter is gonna fall on it, Patrick Walsh. And wow, the play just as we were coming back on the air, the bad Aaron snap. Goes all the way back to the three yard line and the Eves recover. And what a mo swing in the first five seconds. You know, the beginning of these quarters have not been kind to the Jumbos. That is two straight fumbles on the first couple of plays of each quarter. We will see if they can continue trying to come back in this game. But now the Eats are deep in the red zone with a big chance to score with number two leading the charge. Yeah, first and goal for the Eats after the special team's blunder. Mamoron in the shotgun takes a snap. A little play action, gonna throw to Stola. Who else? It's over his head. John Wax right there on the coverage. That'll bring up second and goal. So we got some other scores from around the NESCAC. Amherst leads Colby 16-7. Middlebury over Bates 14-0. Trinity all over Bowden, pounded him out in Hartford 26-0. And Wesley and the Cardinals lead the Continentals at Hamilton 7-3. Here's the second down play. Namoron's going to throw to Stola again. Same play, and Stola makes the catch for a touchdown. Frank Stola, second of the day. That is two straight weeks with two touchdowns for Frank Stola. He is falling out today, only the second quarter, and he has already has plenty of receptions, two touchdowns. So how about the play call? Instant replay to come back with the same exact play and throw it to perfection for a touchdown. Schreiberstein going to come in for the extra point. Stola already up to 19 touchdowns on the career for the junior. Dan Vaughn is the holder. Snap is good. Kick is good. Schreibstein's looked sharp today. That's three for three on his extra points. So 21-8 is our score. 14-48. So two. And you know what? Two big turnovers are the difference in this game. The first, I think it was the second play from scrimmage, Padrini fumbled inside the red zone, and then the bad snap exchange on the punt, and Williams had three yards to go, and that was just too easy. Well, the East defense have definitely played a great game, but those two mistakes are completely on the jumbos, and the East offense have been able to capitalize coming right off from them. So the East will kick it back, kick it off again. Andre goes back, he is the deep back. You know who's had a great bounce back game is number 10, Andrew Shrivestein. Last week, only went one for two in his extra points, and he's already three for three today. We haven't seen him attempt a field goal yet because of how dangerous this East offense has been, but he's been playing great so far. Yeah, absolutely perfect on three extra points. So here's the kickoff. High hanging kick. Andre is going to have to chase it down in the corner. Good kickoff to the two in the corner. Andre has it though, and Andre's up and he's met at the 15 yard line and driven back. Edward Manzella comes down there. Allentown, Pennsylvania. Allentown, Central Class Catholic. They could play some high school football in Pennsylvania. You know that. Absolutely. So it'll be a first and 10 for the Jumbos. 21 8 is the score. Nezcac football on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Williams College hosting Tufts University. Rick Sassone, Matt Freitas, and Jeff Facilio bringing you all the action. Thanks for joining us. Here's a blitz. Carroll just got rid of it. It's a little screenplay. It's complete. Good yardage gain of about six yards. We got a flag on the play. I believe that is our second hanky of the game. Maybe the first one enforced because the other one was declined. You know, seeing that's against the Eves, the Jumbos are. Looks like Luca Puzzi was going to get a great sack there, but he's able to get the pass off. And it's been a Drake, great pursuit by Drake Mead, number 56 on the tackle. Luca Puzzi, what a great name. It could be Luca Puzzi or Luke a Puzzi, which the name is. You can use it either way. You could have like two names, Luca Puzzi. Very true. Not even sure if he's a Lucas or not. Like Luca Brazzi. Don't even know who that is. Wow, the Godfather? Never seen it. Wow. I okay. gotta get cultured. I'm Young sorry. Young guys, yeah, you do, man. I'm sure it's on. I'm sure you can watch it on your phone now. Okay, first down after the penalty puts it out over the 35-yard line, out to the 37. Carroll's gonna drop. Carroll looks. Carroll throws wide open receiver and is dropped. Roche tried to run. 
before he caught it. The graduate student, big mistake for that Tufts offense right there. So speaking of being a student, a student athlete, you're a student first in the NESCAC. I know you're a lacrosse player. Man, how is it balancing practice and studies? And would you get like a 30, 3,900 to get an SAT to get in? <laughs> you know, you have to have like a, to get in the little Ivies. You have to have like a 4,000 SAT on a new scale. You Definitely. guys are, Definitely a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun over here in Williamstown. So there's a throw, and Luke Apuzzi on cue. Luke Apuzzi goes up and bats it down. What a great play from the team captain, the safety, coming out of Princeton, New Jersey. So 14-13 is our time left to go to halftime. Boy, this has been a long first minute of the first quarter. Third and long, courtesy of Luke Apuzzi, went up and swatted it down emphatically. Bobby Carroll's going to have to dial something up. Carroll drops. Carroll's under pressure. Carroll's going to run. we got a flag down, probably a hold. He slides down at the 50. They spot him across the 50, but that's holding on Tufts, and that will come back. Got to say, at the end of that run for Jacob Carroll, very smooth slide to make sure he didn't get tackled. So the penalty is on 52. Did they say 52, Greg uh, Carrion Horahan? Seems like it. The outside linebacker, the sophomore out of Millis, Massachusetts. Tough play for them, a big hold. Sorry, I said outside linebacker. I meant offensive line. But That's fine. tough play for number 52. So third and long. Third and Boston. Third and about 20. It's not that bad, Rick. So Carroll drops back. Little swing pass. It's going to be complete. Puts a move on. Andrew Alexander Sanders. Sanders. Great play out of Sanders. Getting the, getting the dodge to get out of that first tackle. But the Eats are able to smother him up. Yeah, when you need 20 yards, that's not going to cut it. So Williams will get the ball back. And boy, this hometown crowd on a beautiful, beautiful summer slash fall afternoon what do we call it it's a 24 one's fall start officially tomorrow or today i think it's it tomorrow day? tomorrow you college kids should know you're smart about this stuff i'm I getting am, old i can't remember this fall studies <laughs> master of fall studies i love it i love it matt freitas is my play by or my color commentator today so uh great to have him in the booth with me today so uh stola back on his own 35 yard line and there's the kick Another good kick by Wall. Stola is going to field it in traffic. Stola makes the catch and goes straight down. But what a nice play to field it. Wall just punted the turn for no game by Stola. So 13 minutes straight up. Clock stops on the change of possession. The Eves lead the Jumbos 21-8. And you know what's really cool? Out of all the games in America today, all the college football games in America today on a Saturday afternoon. Hundreds, right? Hundreds. Hundreds. All one, two, division three. We probably have a game with the two best nicknames, the Eves and the Jumbos. Without a doubt. I all love it. Elephants and cows over here. I love it. So there's Bobby Mamoron, quarterback, third year starter for the Eves. Comes out, he takes a snap. Hands off to Vaughn. Vaughn, little stutter. Vaughn gets to the outside. Cuts up at the 40. Vaughn makes a nice move. He's across the 45 for an Eves first down. Move the sticks. It'll be first and 10 for the Williams Eves. The senior, Connor Chepinick, making a great tackle. The defensive lineman coming out of Jacksonville, Florida, able to take down our running back over here in Williamstown. Yeah, save, a, save a, even a bigger gain, huh? But what a nice move that was as he cut it up right on the numbers, right at the 40, and was able to make a nice move to get the first down. Mamoron back to throw. Mamoron's going to take off. Mamoron has some room over the 50, cuts outside the numbers and scampers out of bounds inside the 43-yard line. Another first down, move the sticks, and the hometown purple-clad Eves are on the move. It's great to see a nice deep drive coming out of the Eves. Two of their touchdowns so far have been as a result of turnovers within their own red zone. So it is great to see them move in the open field here and see if they can get some offense moving. Straight ahead, Nichols. Nichols in a cloud of dust. Gained about five. Nice run by Joel Nichols. Keeping the legs turning, Joel Nicholas. It's going to bring up a second and five for the Eves, good manageable down. 
Mamoron gives it. It's a reverse Stola. Stola drops it, and Stola's got a fall on it. It's a big loss. About a seven-yard loss all the way back to, I think that's that athleticism of Stola. Knows what he can do with it. I think he was looking at the field and didn't take the ball. It was a little errant little toss. So they try the little double reverse. Doesn't work. Loses yardage. Loses seven. It's going to be third and 12. Head coach Mark Raymond was trying to get a little tricky with the offense there. It seemed like Stola might have been able to break out if he was able to hold on to that ball. But fumbles do happen, as we have definitely seen from this game today. So third and long for the Eves. Bobby Mamoron is a quarterback. Mamoron's going to play fake. Mamoron drops. Mamoron's going long. First Stola to the end zone. Touchdown, Frank Stola. What a throw right on the numbers. Bobby Mamoron threaded the needle. Wow, that was incredible. The junior quarterback with an absolute cannon of an arm hits his favorite target, Frank Stola, for his third touchdown reception of the day, his fifth of the season through two games in this NESCAC season. Schreiberstein on for the extra point. He's been perfect three for three today. And wow, what a, there's two beautiful play action fakes today. Touchdowns to Stola. And the Eves opening up a big lead here. Cyber, Schreiberstein makes it 20. And it's the Eves all over the jumbos on the Northeast Sports Network. Rick Sassone, Matt Freitas will take a break and we'll be right back here from Williamstown, Massachusetts. So welcome back to Williams College. Rick Sasson, Matt Freitas, producer of Jeff Facilio, bringing you all the action. Three touchdowns for Frank Stola. He has four receptions, three of them touchdowns. Total of 88 yards. That last pass, 44-yard touchdown. So there's the return out over the 20, and that's where the Jumbos will start. And they got to go. Now, they showed flashes in the first quarter uh, of that hurry-up offense towards the end of the first quarter so don't sleep on the jumbo's offense the eats are gonna have to keep pushing here the tufts are ever dangerous they just took down three-time reigning champions of the nescac last week it'll be tough to beat so first and ten for the jumbos jacob carroll is the quarterback Steps back, throws, and it's picked off. Ben picked Anthony. off by Anthony. Ben Anthony inside the 30. Big return inside the 20. It's a first down. First and 10 on the big interception. The senior captain, Ben Anthony, out of Phillips Academy with a big interception. Had a great game, lots of tackles so far, but we haven't seen an interception through the air yet. Great play by Ben Anthony. So, wow, first play from scrimmage after the kickoff return is a pick in a big return. Anthony returns it inside the 20 in the Williams College Eves. Up 28 to 20, are looking for more. And there's a shirt that comes to the near sideline. Look like a, a flag. Why is a player throwing a flag? So Bobby Mamoron. Little play action, he's looking. Throw to Stola again, and that's incomplete. I thought he was looking at the inside receiver. Seems like a miscommunication between number two and number three. But as we've seen so far in this game today, we cannot doubt the skill of either of them with three touchdowns apiece. Well, I think Stola may, might have gave up on the route because I thought he was going underneath to Justin Nelson, the junior out of Brandon, Mississippi. Nelson was wide open on a post. I thought he was going to go inside to him, and maybe Stola did as well. Seemed like it could have been a great play. 
Yeah, I think uh, Nelson might have had a track to the end zone. It would have been an interesting play if he was able to get that pass to Nelson. All of Mamoron's passing touchdowns, all five on the season, have been to Frank Stola so far. So there's a complete. Shin the Spezio, the tight end, the sophomore makes the catch off play action. And Bobby Mamoron has been very good with the play action today. He's been getting great separation from the receivers. In his second start today, Tyler Spezio as well, already setting a career high in both receiving yards and receptions. So third and seven from the 16-yard line. The Eves operate. Vaughn is the lone back. Horahan switches from the right slot to the left slot. Vaughn's going to get the carry. Vaughn goes straight ahead. Vaughn's wrapped up, keeps the feet moving. Second effort to no avail right at the line of scrimmage and that brings up a fourth down and now Scheiberstein comes in to attempt a field goal. We so can see Schreibstein's only second field goal attempt of the year so far. Uh, he is 0 for 1 on the season. He did miss one last week taking on Middlebury but we'll see if he can make this one now after going perfect in his extra points for the day. 33 yards from the middle of the field. Vaughn is the holder. Vaughn gets it down. Schreibstein it's right through the middle. Piece of cake. 31 to 8. Tribe Stevens looked fantastic today. You can see number 10 getting hyped running off the field right now. Oh, player of the kicker of the week and then his kick. Do they have that? We have the special teams player of the week. Oh, special so we'll teams player of the week. There you go. Take that one on. Yeah. I have a feeling before this is over, John Andre might have something to say about that. So, he Tufts has looked fantastic uh, so far. Yeah, Tufts fans, if you're not, uh, you're not out of this game by far. A lot of time left. 9 11 to halftime. But boy, 31 points by the East. Now two of them, two scores, 14 of the points, two touchdowns and two extra points came off the courtesy of the short fields. But still 31 points and you got nine minutes and 11 seconds left to go to the first half. After seeing a game where the East only scored 13 points, this is an offensive explosion for the Williamstown College. So Andre back deep, Schreibstein going to boot it end over end. And it flies over the head and out of the side of the end zone. So it'll be a touchback, first and 10 for the Tufts University Jumbos. You know, this offensive possession will definitely be interesting for Tufts. This is only Jacob Carroll's second start of his career. And that was the first interception he has thrown. So this is the first time he's coming out. I right after he made a big mental mistake. So we'll see if he's able to recuperate and lead his team to another some more points. So the touchback will start on the 25, one of the new Sammy safety rules in football. That'll bring up Jacob Carroll, the senior quarterback, 6'2", 195, out of Birmingham, Alabama, in the shotgun. Carroll drops. Carroll throws to the right. Carroll's got a receiver incomplete. The ball was underthrown. Slowing down was Frank Wright Rouch. And pass interference is going to be the call. So the receiver slowed down. And unfortunately for Colston Smith, the sophomore, couldn't avoid the contact. It's got to be important when you're playing that defensive back position, even though Colston's a linebacker. He's got to be sure to turn his head around when it's coming deep. Tough play, but it does happen in the sport of football, and that's a great play for the tough team. Well, you know, and, and then they'll say, boy, that's a, a tough break uh, because the ball was underthrown, but that's what happens when you don't get your head around. Exactly. A lot of good things are not going to happen Absolutely. when you're defending on a play. So it'll be a first and 10 from the 40 after the pass interference call. 15-yard penalty, first down. Carroll's going to take off. Carroll's got some room. Carroll's out of bounds on the far sideline, tied up into the down markers. And I think they marked him at the 50. If they did, it's a first down. So move the sticks for the Jumbos. Jacob Carroll on the 10-yard scamper. Carroll putting his arm out there to get the extra yard at the end of that run. Great job making sure he doesn't let go of that ball and forcing a fumble. First and 10, right at midfield on the far hash just over the Williams logo. Carroll, play action. Carroll throws high and incomplete. Contact on O.J. Anderson. And getting up, defending on the plate. J 
Josh Wax incomplete. And I misidentified Josh Wax earlier as uh, the Tufts player that's been carding Frank Stola. I just realized that it's uh, Nolan Ostmo is the player. Josh Wax is on the Williams College Eves. So apologize for that mistake earlier in the game. So Carroll's going to drop back. Here comes pressure. Apuzo with the sack. And right there, his teammate, number 17, Jared Westner, was in on the play. The junior and the senior taking Jacob Carroll down. Big sack for that East defense. Boy, let me tell you something. Apuzo, when he decides to come, the senior safety, Lawrenceville High School, Princeton, New Jersey, he brings it. At 5'10", 210 pounds, that is a scary sight for any quarterback when he's coming after you. Yeah, he plays more like a linebacker than a safety, I'll tell you. Rushes the passer like a lineman. He's got, talk about a total package. So here's Carroll, third and long. Jacob Carroll being chased. Jacob Carroll's going to throw on the run, and it's thrown high and incomplete, and that'll bring up fourth down for Fan the Jumbos. Fantastic job by Yunovsky, the defensive lineman for the East, in hot pursuit of Jacob Carroll coming around that right side. So on the pass interference call, was the only real positive play. The Eves bend, but don't break. The ball still on the plus side of the field for the Williams College Eves as Frank Stola is going to go back. And here's another punt by Patrick Walsh out of Concord, Massachusetts. And Walsh hits it. Stola is going to come up, make the fair catch on the 26 yard line. Great punt by number 98, the freshman from Concord. Definitely a big punter, six foot two, 200 pounds. That could be great for the tough special team unit having him come down to help with your tackling. Yeah, and I saw him when I pulled up and I was walking out. I saw him, one, either it was either um, Patrick Walsh, the punter, or the kicker coming out of the locker room, and that's uh, number 49, Matt Allswanger. One of them, because I'm going, man, that's a small football player. I go, ah, it's got to be the punter, the kicker. And I looked down, they had soccer shoes on. So that was one of them. Yeah, it had to be one of them. So he had headphones on. Just, yeah. just getting ready to go. Getting ready to go, man. You know, the kicker, Matt Allswanger, hasn't had a lot of chance to, to make a lot of plays today. That one extra point that they had fumbled and led to a two-point conversion coming out of uh, – after that touchdown. Fifth reception by Frank Stola picks up nine yards. So Stola now three yards short of 100, five receptions, 97 yards, and three touchdowns. How about those fantasy numbers through a quarter and a half? He's got half of the second quarter to play yet. Last game, he racked up 151 yards, so we'll see if he can beat that total today. Bobby Mameron waits for the snap. Second and one. Good, manageable offensive play. Throws out here. The complete is made for a first down outside the 40-yard line. So Justin Nelson. Nelson makes the catch, and it's first and 10. Seems as if Osmo, our cornerback who used to be covering Frank Stola, moved over to cover number 13 for the Eves. Yeah, I see that. They switched up, and number 31 is going to come down here to the bottom. Jason Nadancy, and Nadancy is going to be on Stola now, so they did make the switch after Stola's been having the big afternoon. Tough task for the sophomore. We'll see if he can do something against number three. First and ten for the Eves. Little play action, throw to Stola. Stola has another catch. And that's 100 yards for number three right there. Frank Stola putting together a fantastic game. Sure is. Gain a seven. It's going to put him over 100, as Matt said. Kind of officially, that makes it 104 on six catches. And we still have 620 left to go here in the first half. Beautiful day. The Berkshires in the background were nestled in the Hoosick River Valley. I've been to a lot of college campuses in America. This is uh, one of the most beautiful. It, it seriously is. Glad to be here today. Thanks for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. Mameron waits for the snap. Play action right to Stola. And Stola incomplete. And that might have been one he was trying to run before he caught it. So that's going to bring up a third down. Big play for the Tufts University Jumbos. They definitely needed that one there on a third and three. They need to stop here to make sure that the Eves aren't still racking up the points on them. 
31 to eight. I gotta say, there has been flashes of excellence for this Jumbo's offense and defense. Once they put it all together, this is gonna be a dangerous team in the NESCAC. Stole it to the left of the formation. Split all the way out just inside the 50. Mamoron, little play action. Mamoron being chased, gonna fake. Reaches ahead for the first down. Mark Raymond wants the spot, and I think he's got it. So reaching ahead, Bobby Mamoron. Jay Savitti doesn't think so on the far side. But what a play by saw, Bobby Mamoron. You saw number nine defensive lineman Jovan Nadanovich in hot pursuit of Mamoron there, yeah. forcing him out of the pocket. That would have made me run a little faster. <laughs> a little incentive to run a little faster with that big fella chasing you. Like we said last week, nine tackles, three sacks for defensive player of the week in the NESCAC. That's only four sacks in the career for him, though. His first year starter full time, and he's been doing fantastic through two games, proving that he deserves that starting role. Incredible. So there's a handoff. Nicholas, Nicholas down the sidelines. Nicholas is going to get in, but we got a flag behind the play, probably coming back. I see it. The Williams College faithful don't see it. And that's definitely coming back. That's why I didn't get too excited. Yeah, tough play for the East, but. Joel Nicholas did show some skill there getting down that right sideline. Only a freshman, that'll be great looking for the future for this Williams College team. Yeah, with Mamoron coming back, Stola coming back, wow. So Mark Raymond not happy about the call, gonna get the explanation. Raymond is actually a couple words I can't say on the air about that call. Anthony. Florio, the referee, threw the flag and came over and made the explanation. And that's a spot foul coming way back. They're going to be back for first and 20 on Williams' own 42-yard line. We'll see if they can make anything out of this. Number 24, Kyle Horahan, the two-sport athlete running onto the field. So 5.06 left till halftime. Williams College backed up courtesy of the penalty. Mamoron surveying the defense. Mamoron fakes and keeps it. He's smothered by the big, big fella, Jovan Nanovich. Gets maybe a yard, possibly just to the line of scrimmage. So Nanovich coming in and on cue, makes the tackle. It's gonna be second and long. And like Matt said, just got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little bit over. You know, if anyone in this tough defense is gonna make a spark, it's gonna be Nenotovic. He's very active on the defensive side of the ball. Play action, once again, great fake. Mamoron's gonna go deep and Frank Stolo is held up and there is a flag. Flag down on number 31, Jason and Donsi, the defensive back covering Frank Stola. And you know what's interesting about that play, and Donsi, I don't think he had to do it. The ball was overthrown, it was good coverage, he was right there and he grabbed him. Tough nope. set, two people back on Stola. That was definitely a tough throw from Mamron getting all the way back there, but he was able to overthrow it. And then Donsi put the hand on Stola. So it'll be 15 yards and an automatic first down as the sticks will move. And that'll bring the ball into plus territory to the near hash on the 41-yard line of Tufts University. 4.21 left to go here in the first. This is NESCAC football on the Northeast Sports Network. Rick Sassone, Nate, Matt Freitas, and Jeff Facilio bringing you all the action. Thank you for joining us on a beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon from Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. First and 10 now after the pass interference call. Mamoron and the purple clad Eves are back in business in the plus side of the field. Quick throw to Stola. Stola makes the catch and skips out of bounds. No, it That's too easy. Like, it almost seems like the Tufts defense is perfectly okay with letting Stola get those short passes. They just don't want him to break out for another big game like he has earlier in the game. Yeah, I know. This has been uh, easy, easy on the outs. Easy outs to Stola. Eight yards like nothing. Eight yards like it was practice. 
So second down, we're inside of four minutes here in the first half. Mamaron takes a snap, fakes to Vaughn. Mamaron's going to throw, and he overthrows Stola. Stola broke it off to the inside. The pass was far, so we got a flag down. We got an eligible downfield. So I guess if you're tough, you got to take it, right? Be third and two, or second and ten. Neymatovich. Taking down Mamron right after that throw, really close to getting in for a sack. So big Jeremy Subjinski was downfield from Farmingdale, New Jersey, 6'4", 280. Get that inertia going on a big fella like that, and you're going to go downfield. I don't want to be the one to tackle him. <laughs> no, I don't want to be the one to get in front of him either. So I should say attempt to tackle him. So second down, I guess it's only a five yard penalty. I thought it was 10. And now we got a flag and a false start. So we're starting to see a little bit of Patrick Watson, 6'6", 290, Braintree Mass. The left tackle. Where he started the game at net left tackle. Looks like he's playing right guard now. Left tackle is number 65. Ball's tipped and caught by Vaughn. Vaughn gets close to the first down. I think he's going to be about a yard short, but still a good pickup on second down. It's going to bring up third and short. What a nice play. After the tip, that's some great improv improv improvising. Sorry, people. No, that's For Dan right. Vaughn getting out there to get the big gain, almost getting to the first down marker. It's a live broadcast. We're cool. Number 65, Terry Zapt, is a 6'6", 300-pound freshman. 300-pound freshman. That's horrifying. Playing tackle now. So we've got a timeout on the field, and we mentioned other games today. The last scores we had, Amherst was ahead of Colby, 16-7. Middlebury over Bates, 14-0. Trinity was crushing the Bowdoin Polar Bears, 26-0. Wesleyan at Hamilton up 7-3. That was a while ago. We'll try to get some updates on those scores as well. Probably into halftime, out of the second half in the third quarter. All those games kicked at 1 p.m. We kicked at 1.30. Amherst, Hamilton, Middlebury, Tufts, Wesleyan all 1-0. Bates, Bowling, Colby, Trinity, and Williams all 0-1 coming into today. Last week's scores, Hamilton beat the Polar Bears 37-24. Amherst over Bates 27-13. Wesleyan over the Mules of Colby 30-0. And of course, Tufts beat Trinity 14-8. And Middlebury beat Williams 17-13. Here's the third and one play now. Namer on under center. Sneaks straight ahead. Has it easily. He needed to get to the 31. He got to the 30. So we're moving the sticks. First and 10 Eves. Great play by number two. Three touchdowns through the air so far. Not many incompletions. But his legs have been proven to be one of his strongest parts today. I don't know if I mentioned this before. I think I did. What a beautiful day today. It was fantastic outside. You can see the mountains in the distance. The clouds the are, are starting gone. to change. Yeah, there's no clouds. The leaves are starting to change. The Berkshires, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. We got a very nice facility here. I want to thank Dick Quinn, Sports Information Director here at Williams College for the hospitality. There's a catch and a spin on the outside. Good game. Justin Nelson out of Brandon, Mississippi. You know who are uh, Brandon, Mississippi? You know who else is from Brandon, Mississippi? Did you guys watch the game Thursday night? Gardner Minshew. Really? For the Jacksonville Jaguars out of Brandon, Mississippi. Sure. Gardner Minshew went to East Carolina, transferred out to Wazoo, finished up with the Washington State Cougars. What a great story. One of the best for, one of the best starts for any rookie quarterback in NFL history. Oh, yeah. Games. What a great, a great night he had, yes. So second and four now from inside the 25-yard line. Carroll, play action. Carroll's going to throw. Stola, oh, just had it knocked away. And what a nice play. Jason Nadansi 
from Linfield, Mass, a sophomore. And boy, if it wasn't for that hand, that would have been the fourth touchdown for Stola. Stola putting together a great game, and Donsi switched on to him later in the game in the second quarter. Definitely a tough spot to play, but great recovery by him to keep that touchdown off the scoreboard. Yeah, so far making the difference. So it's going to bring up third and four, and you get the feeling that Tufts almost has to hold Williams to a field goal here if they want to stay in this game, even though we got a full half to play. Namoron going to fake, rolls out wide open as Horahan. He's got the first down. He's belted at the 11-yard line, dives ahead inside all the way to the six. It's going to be first and goal. Eves, the tackle made by Michael Maghetto out of Verona, New Jersey. Horahan listed as a linebacker, but is playing a much more productive offensive role as a fullback this year. Just his second reception of the season, but that is a big one. You know, we mentioned Ben Anthony. We were talking about Ben before the game. Also, Horahan, a lacrosse player. They're physical in the lacrosse game. Oh, my gosh, yes. <laughs> ben Anthony, short stick, D midi, and Kyle, one of our starting D poles. Both absolute menaces on the field. So here's the snap. Play action, throws the end zone, and it's over ahead and out of bounds. Estola couldn't get, couldn't catch it if he, if he had. He ran out of real estate. Nadesi right there on the coverage. So he's he's made a difference on Stola so far. Yeah, he's been playing fantastic. Stola's a really a tough threat to cover. The six foot oh, 195 wide receiver, but he's been playing a great game. So how great is this for you, being up in the booth, being a lacrosse player, teammates of yours? Uh, you're going to get to play with them in the spring. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a really cool time. Just my first year. This is my first game broadcasting. I'm having a lot of fun. Good. Good for you. Glad to have you, Matt. Glad to have you. Appreciate you having me. Two backs in the backfield in the shotgun now. And there's a fake keeper, quarterback keeper, and boom. Was that number nine? Might have been. I'm sure it was. Oh, it was. He's looking at the corner, and he stuck. Talk about textbook. If you're going to make a tackle in video, hit his legs down, his head up, drove the shoulder pad right into the quarterback, and uh, we're talking about big 6'3", 220, out of Washington, D.C., Jovan Nenadovic made the tackle, and there's a timeout on the field, and... Uh, We'll stay right here and talk about uh, beautiful day. So, uh, you doing any lacrosse now in the fall? Do they have fall lacrosse? You do? Anything? Well, in the in the NESCAC, we don't have fall practices. Lots of the guys have been practicing on our own. You do it on your you're on your own, right? Right. For the season, but you can't do anything organized. There's like the NCA police will come and arrest you, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah you don't we don't want, want any of that. No, we don't want any of that. We don't want we don't want Williams College to be in the next scandal. Oh, of course not. Time. We're clean over here in Williamstown. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because you know, um, I uh, you know being play-by-play -play voice for the Northeast Sports Network. I do a lot of Williams games. I'm closest to Williams. I don't want to be involved in any of that. I don't even mind anything. <laughs> so keep it clean, all right? Absolutely. All right, all right. so it's uh, sec third and goal now from the seven-yard line. And once again, uh, you got to think if they hold them to a field goal here, the Jumbos uh, be a big victory. But I'll tell you, the offensive play calling has been stellar. And here's the throw, going to Stola in the end zone, and it's incomplete. It's underthrown. You know, Stola looking to make that catch with his back almost facing the ball. Would have been a fantastic grab. Yeah, I agree. It definitely would have. So that should bring on the field goal team, and Shrivestein trots out there. And Shrivestein's been kind of a star today. Andrew Shrivestein, he has four extra points and a field goal. A lot of action for a kicker. This is going to be from the near hash. It's going to be put down at the 14-yard line, so a 24-yard chip shot. Daniel Vaughn is the holder. The kick is up, and it's good. Wow, great game from number 10 so far. His legs have looked fantastic. Flag down on the field, though. Yeah. Uzochi Aprail just shoved down. Looked like I think it was number 52 for the Eves. Jeffrey McArthur. Tough play to make. MacArthur, one of the captains of the Eve defense, they won't let that go too easily. No, so I got to think that uh, that's a big play because it's going to move the kickoff up. And uh, so it should be put in the end zone. So I'm just foreshadowing here. With a minute 12 left to go in the half, the Jumbos are going to be on the 25 yard line. It's going to be a real tough drive for them to make, but it would be huge if the Jumbos were able to put some points on the board before they head inside for the break. Or, unless I'm special teams coaching, 
Uh, I would, um, I would, uh, some noise coming down there. I would kick it along the ground because you got short coverage and get down there and try to make them make a play inside the 25. Exactly. It's definitely tough. Let's they want they to do. kick it deep to Andre as well. Seemed like a potent returner so far today. Might not want to put the ball in his hands. Yeah, but if you squib it along the ground to the side, make one of the up guys feel it. I don't exactly. know. Could or be he, a good play. Or he's just going to kick this through the field house over there. Let's see what happens. With how strong uh, Stripstein's leg has been, he might be able to I send this thing to the field hockey field. <laughs> Kicking off from the from the plus 45-yard line is Andrew Stripstein. And he's got a leg. Oh, now I look at the shoes. It was him I saw walking out of the locker room. And he is, just kicks it out of the end zone, into the fence, one bounce over the fence. See a great grab from a supporter in the back, one-handed one to handed get that grab. thing stay keeping on the field. <laughs> Waving to the crowd with the ball, or looking to kind of throw it back. Might just be able to keep it as a souvenir, who knows? I, I'll tell you, man. Nobody's going to get it. If anybody should have extra footballs, it would be Williams College, I would think. <laughs> so first and ten from the 25-yard line. Just a long, long, steep tradition of academic excellence at Williams College. Carroll with the fake. Oh, no, we got a backup quarterback in. Takes off and runs, and I want to say it's the freshman, Trevon Woodson, out of New York, St. Augustine High School in Louisiana, 6'2", 180. So Woodson played a little bit last week. Woodson drops. Woodson looks, holds on a little late. He's got a throw, and he, oh, a complete to Roche on the far sideline. We got a penalty down, flag down. I think it's going to be holding. Seemed like he had an awful lot of time back there. You can see Savetti putting a lot of faith in his freshman quarterback, putting him out on the field here. This is some big moments for him. Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer, wow. Woodson taking a big hit there. The freshman out of St. Augustine, Louisiana. Oscar Onobiski putting down the hammer, 6-3, 2-10 out of Lexington, Mask, and that's going to be a big gain. Tack it on to the reception, and the freshman has the jumbos in plus territory inside of a minute. They're on the 47-yard line of the Williams College Eves. Empty backfield. Woodson looks to throw. Woodson's going to take off. Woodson got a good block. Woodson's up across the 40, dives ahead to the 35, and a first down for the Tufts. They trail 34-8. But wow, the freshman comes in and that's a spark. That could be big for this Tufts offense. He's looking good out here, looking sharp with a nice throw to the sideline earlier. And, and another, another one, one in the same spot. Frank Reich, Ro Ro Roche. So Roche, the graduate student, 6'2", how cool would it be to have your bachelors playing football, working on your masters? How Matching cool? passes from a freshman quarterback. <laughs> how so. cool would that be? Wow, good for him, Frank Roche. Can hear the Eats faithful getting nice and loud, trying to rally their troops here. Woodson once again dropped. Woodson, all kinds of time. He could set up camp, and there's the interception. It's Ben Anthony, second of the game. Anthony still with a long return. Anthony down the sidelines, puts a move on. Woodson wraps him up. Anthony still running inside the 35 and out of bounds. So Ben Anthony, his second interception of the game. You know, you could make a case that Eats full team has been making cases to look for those player of the week spots. Ben Anthony, two interceptions on defense, Stola, three receiving touchdowns, and Shrivesteen putting together a perfect game on the special teams. Yeah. Fantastic work for the Purple Cows. Yeah, Purple Cows could be clean sweep, offensive player, defensive player, special teams player. I'm in. I'm voting. You know, tough play for Woodson, looking really sharp coming down the field, but an ill-advised pass in the middle. Ben Anthony, number four, the captain there to smother it up and get that interception with a deep return into Tufts territory. So from the 43-yard line, so the street should be jamming after the game. Good crowd here today. We're not even at halftime yet. Mamoron drops back to throw. He's going to throw. He's looking deep for Stoller. Good coverage by number 31, Jason Nadancy. And I'll tell you, Nadancy, since he's come in, he's done a good job on him. I'm not sure Stoll has caught a single touchdown since then. Just a couple of short Definitely out routes. Definitely not a touchdown, just a couple of short out routes. And that's when Nadancy first started covering. Exactly. The first you know, couple minutes, so 11 seconds left. 
second down. We're almost at half. At half, we'll take a break. We'll come back a little early. We'll go over stats and some of the keys to the first half and the keys to the second and talk about what Tufts University has to do to get it back in this 34-8. to eight. And right now, what they need to do is shut down these next couple plays. Ending this half strong for the Jumbos would be a huge defensive stand for them. It's already going to be tough for them to come back in the second half, but they definitely want the help here by making sure it stays 34-8. to eight. Yeah, So I was passing through a couple weeks ago, had some business out, uh, out a little bit further west of here, so I drove through campus, stopped, had a nice lunch at uh, Ramonto's down on the street there. Got some pizza? Had some good pizza, sure. Sat up there, had, had a nice time, and uh, looking forward to visit, visit there again. Lovely, lovely community here in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Ephraim Williams, the namesake. So the place of the great uh, turn of the 19th century Haystack Revival. Absolutely, on we campus. have the memorial over on the other part of uh, campus. On campus, a beautiful site. And I've done, I did some baseball games in the spring over there in the complex. I did a little bit of field hockey. Wonderful, wonderful uh, facility. Just a great place. Funny you mentioned baseball, actually. Williams College, home of the first intercollegiate baseball game ever against did, Harvard University. Did not know that. I love, thank you for that. I did Absolutely. not know that. So here's second and ten. Now only 11 seconds left to go in the half. The Eves are looking to score. There's a little play action again. Nice fake throw to Stola. Stola makes the catch. Stola puts a move on. Frank Stola still on his feet. Dives down in the middle of the field. And that's a great play. That's a great play by a wide receiver. I'll tell you why. And they're going to kill it here. They're going to clock it. And they do. But that's a great play by Stola. Okay. And that's it. But that's a great play. You know what Frank Stola was doing? What was he doing there? Setting up the field goal in the middle of the field. Absolutely. That's why he came to the middle of the field. What a high cerebral football play by Frank Stola. And that's one of the things when Frank Raymond mentioned, he's the full package that you like as a wide receiver. There you saw a very football intelligent play to end the half. Wanted to point that out. We're at halftime here at Farley Lamb Field. Williams all over Tufts. 34-8, Rick Sasso, Matt Freitas, Jeff Vasilio will bring you the second half here on the Northeast Sports Network. Uh, my name is Adam Regensburg from Fossil, Pennsylvania. I'm a senior on the Williams football team. I'm a punter, kicker, and wide receiver. I also am on the varsity baseball team here. Uh, off the field, I'm a double major, econ and history. Uh, with plans to go maybe into the financial world, not sure yet. Trying to figure it out like everybody else is a senior here. Yeah, so Williams is a place that I always wanted to go. It was uh, tough. I got hurt my senior year, my post grad year, didn't have much film. But lucky enough, uh, I got a chance to come here and play both sports. You know, I walked on the football team, got recruited to play baseball here, and now I'm, I'm still doing both. Yes, yeah, so for the first three years, I've been here three and a half years, you know, didn't really go as expected. Um, but right now, being 4-1, and one, credit to this team for not giving up and the guys in this locker room. It, it's a great feeling to realize all of our hard work is finally paying off. So last week at Middlebury might be the best win I've ever had in sports. Right? It, um, it was a culmination of all our hard work to march down four times in the second half of the game and score every time and do what we wanted. It was a feeling unlike anything else. It was the most gratifying win I've ever been a part of. And Last second game when he touched down, I was the first one on the dog pile and the first one out because I know how painful they could be on the bottom. So I got on and got out. Another great benefit of playing on the football and baseball teams is that great, you know, alumni network. We always have former players reaching out, offering career advice in which direction to go with our lives. They also help steer us in the right direction for summer internships, you know, how to get them, how to prepare, what's the best way to interview. Maybe they'll take a look at our resume and help us out if they can. But the strong alumni network is very helpful, especially when trying to plan all of our futures. So one professor here who's been particularly inspiring is uh, Professor Charles Dew. He has taught me to think a little deeper and be more aware of the situations I'm in and how what I think and what I say affects other people. He has a pretty unique story coming from the South, coming to Williams, born a racist, his words, and the, the transformation he underwent you know, when he realized how the way he thought and his actions were affecting other people. And he does a great job in class getting us to realize that things going on in the world 
can be handled, but you need to stop and think about what you're saying and what you're doing in order to take the appropriate action in whatever situation presents itself. Yeah, outside of sports, outside of the seasons, I uh, work for Gary Guerin and the athletic department here. Big basketball fan. Uh, working the shot clock and the game clock for about three years now. Kind of, kind of head dog on that team. Finally. Um, also, sometimes when when I can, I get over to Brayton, the elementary school, help out with some tutoring. Um, we also do a little bit of team impact with baseball, so we're also involved in the community. You know, trying to do some outreach programs, things like that. Hi, my name is Eric Davis. I'm a senior captain on the Williams College football team. I'm from Princeton Junction, New Jersey. I'm an econ and history major. So I picked Williams in part due to my high school football coach. I went to West Windsor Plainsboro High School South. It's a public school in Central Jersey. My coach sent Ryan Lupo, class of 11, Jeff Riemann, Etienne Aduya, all Williams College football players before me here to Williams. And I saw the tradition and how important it was at the college and I knew I had to be a part of it. Being captain on the team comes with a lot of responsibility. Prior to Coach Raymond arriving on campus, the captains were responsible for organizing all the workouts. We got the team going, got the team started, energetic every day. Other responsibilities include you know, meeting organization, scheduling meetings with the seniors, talking about the direction of the team, goals of the team. And now that Coach Raymond has arrived, that's expanded. We now have a unity council with other team leaders from other classes. And we meet with Coach Raymond pretty regularly to uh, discuss the team, how we feel the direction is going, whether it's good or bad. The captains on the field have a lot of responsibilities with practice, whether it's leading the stretch, the coin toss, taking penalties, declining penalties, quite a bit of roles. First thing that I noticed that's different with Coach Raymond at the helm is you know, how much he emphasizes toughness. Toughness is one of his favorite words, and it comes in many forms on the team, whether it be the workouts that we did in the spring, practices during camp, following the little things of accountability, like being on time, being early, the way we keep our lockers, the way we dress around school, the, what, the football gear we wear. The, the attention to detail is really high. He believes the toughness starts you know, with the little things and it translates into the big things working hard on the field. So this year, I'm again the, one of the co-presidents of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. I hope to expand a lot of the good work we've done in the past, whether it be uh, combating sexual assault, community outreach events like Kids Night Out, and the charity events that we've done broaden the reach of the committee a little bit. In addition to that, I'm on the Gargoyle Society, the semi-secret society. The goal is to better the college any way possible. We have meetings and we discuss a lot of different uh, things at the college and behind some really interesting issues. Last summer, I had an internship with Fiat Chrysler Automobiles in field sales. It went really well and they invited me back for a full-time offer as a district sales manager. They'll be starting in June, July following uh, graduation. It's my last year. Uh, it's hard to believe, but I think it will be my best year yet. Hi, I'm Jeremy Subjinski. I'm a junior offensive lineman uh, from Howell, New Jersey, and I'm majoring in history. Williams definitely wasn't originally on my radar. Coach Crate, who's now on the strength and conditioning staff, but was on the football staff prior, had a good relationship with my prep school coach, and my coach and him really thought that it'd be a good fit for me and definitely something I should take a look at. So um, eventually I kind of eased up on the idea of going to Williams, and I said, you know what, I'll take a visit and see what it's all about. Sam Gowan was my host and meeting with the previous staff and just kind of being on campus, I realized meeting the guys very quickly that this was going to be the place where I really wanted to go. And I was so grateful that I was able to you know, visit because had I not come up here, I never would have landed here and I would have missed out on so much. But just realized quickly that the community was something I really believed in and I knew that academically and athletically there was just no better fit for me. Here, our offensive line prides itself on being extremely close as a unit, both on the field and off the field. And that's something that's kind of been in place since when I got here. Um, and that's kind of like something we rally around as a unit. So on our cleats this year, the offensive line has specialized cleats and you'll see the letters FCBB, and that stands for our college and brothers before. And it's been something that's been in place, you know, since I got here. And it's really just a reminder that being a Williams College Eve means something. It was a pretty tough decision, obviously, committing to a program that didn't have a head coach in place. But for me, I just knew I really wanted to go to Williams College because of everything I reiterated earlier. So I was confident in the school getting the decision right. And I couldn't be more happy with landing with Coach Raymond as our head coach and Coach Blumenauer as my offensive line coach. I really feel like I hit the jackpot both in the school I chose and the coaches in place here. One of the reasons I picked Williams College is that I had no idea what I wanted to study or what I wanted to do when I grow up. So 
the liberal arts were great for me and through kind of exploration of that I realized that I really loved history and kind of the art of storytelling and narrative writing and um, that department's been great to me and Professor Cato said in Latin American studies has really been something I've I've leaned on here heavily um, he's been a great advisor to me but also a great professor who I've learned tons from so both in and out of the classroom I was really fortunate very early on to be in connection with the Career Center and looking at internship opportunities. So after my first year, I worked for KIPP Schools Philadelphia in their strategy department, um, overseeing um, development as well as external affairs. I really enjoyed that. And then this past summer, I worked in mergers and acquisitions for an insurance brokerage firm back in New Jersey. And both experiences were great and furnished through Williams College, and I really gained a lot from them. Through those two prior internship experiences, I was able to kind of get a good grasp of what I wanted to do, you know, this summer and potentially moving forward. So I just found out recently that I'm going to be working for EY Parthenon in strategy consulting in Boston this summer. And that's again through Williams College and on-campus recruiting opportunities that the school has furnished. So I'm extremely grateful for all my internship experiences and, you know, the kind of the path that's, that's laid out for me. One of the main reasons I actually picked Williams is that I knew that a place like this would give me the opportunity to do stuff in the classroom, on the field, but also beyond that and engage in my community here. So I really relish the opportunity. So I serve on the executive board of our Student Athletic Advisory Committee, um, our first generation advisory board, our financial aid focus group, and I'm also a tour guide on campus. All involvements I'm very proud of and I really enjoy you know, being in those roles. Something that Coach Ray always talks about that really resonates in addition to the culture he's built here is that you know, us being here in a position that we're in is all a product of people's hard work that gets us these places. So with that being said, I'm really grateful for the coaching staff we have here, as well as my teammates and my parents and all the coaches I had along the way. Being in a place like Williams really is, is a blessing and that comes out of, it's born out of the efforts of so many people that, that make these kinds of you know, opportunities possible.
Welcome back to Williams College. We're at Farley Lamb Field. Rick Sassone and Matt Freitas bringing you the action up here. Jeff Facilio is our producer. We're just about ready to go to start the second half. And Williams all over Tufts, 34-8. They started off with a turnover. Tufts turned it over uh, in the in their own territory. Williams took over in the red zone. And, uh, Matt, they haven't looked back. Absolutely not. Williams has been able to capitalize on four turnovers so far in the game, taking on the Tumbos. There have been lots of different discrepancies in terms of the play styles today. Tufts has been running a lot of slot plays, p short passes, while Williams has been able to find some success thrown deep from Bobby Mamer on to Frank Stola. Stola now has over 100 yards receiving and three touchdowns, which ties the Williams College School record for receiving touchdowns in a game. And he's one short of tying the career high of 21 Un unbelievable frank stola only a junior only a junior he'll be back and the quarterback bobby mamaron will be back as well williams and uh the news just gets worse for tufts uh they have to kick off so williams gets the ball to start the half <laughs> so the tufts kickoff team is already lined up out there williams is huddled up uh in front of their own bench on the 40 yard line and uh they come out and of course frank stola is going to go back deep along with number 22, Nick Landry. Uh, number Actually, number 13, Justin Nelson, is going to go back. Landry's more of an up-back position on the 20-yard line. The kicker is number 49, uh, Matt Allswanger, is going to put it in play from the 40-yard line. Second half underway, Williams leads 34-8. to Nezcac football on the Northeast Sports Network, Leather goes deep end over end that is a boot from Allswanger from the Tufts kicker number 49 so he brings a little bit of uh, passion and adrenaline out of the locker room to boot it over Stola's head not give the dangerous Frank Stola a chance to return it and uh, goes out of the end zone the Eves will take over first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. We took 276 total yards of offense. And would you say Tufts had 125? Just about. Domination. And one of the touchdowns for uh, Williams was three-yard drive because they took over on the three-yard line after the... Uh, right on that first possession, yeah. The punt. Uh, no, I'm talking about the one of the punt, Oh, too. beginning of the second quarter. My fault. Yeah. Mamoron's going to roll out. Mamoron's going to keep it. Mamoron tries to get outside. He escapes a tackle and scampers out of bounds. Picks up about eight yards and... Bobby Mamoron had 55 yards rushing in the first half. He just added to that total. We were talking about it earlier. Coach Savetti of Tufts said before this game, following his team's win over the three-time NESCAC champion, Trinity, that he was facing arguably the best quarterback within the conference in this game against Williams, number two, Bobby Mamoron, the junior from Duxbury High School. Yeah, and uh, Coach uh, Matt, uh, Mark Raymond of the Eves said that, uh, you know, Mamoron is uh, – as good as it gets, a third-year starter, has some new receivers, and there he throws short to Stola, who was open on the near side, but it's going to be incomplete, and that's the only way to stop Frank Stola uh, from catching the ball is throw at his feet. You know, Mamoron trying to throw across his body there, running to his left, the righty quarterback. A tough throw to make, but he tried to make it anyways. Stola was just a little bit too far for that pass to make it through. So now here's a big third down as early in the third quarter as you can get for Tufts because they trail big on the scoreboard, but they need stops. They need good field position. So here's an opportunity as Mamoron is in the shotgun with twin receivers down here to the left. The man in the slot is Horahan, and Vaughn goes ahead, and Vaughn has a first down. So well-developed trap play as Vaughn takes it, gets good blocking Horahan led the way out of the slot position to open up a nice hole and a nice first down for the Eves. Knowing a great run by Vaughn, I'm still going to take this opportunity to gas up Mamoron a little bit. You saw before that play, a little pre-snap knowledge, making sure to move Vaughn to that right side, able to get him through the line for that first down. Yeah, also, yes, a third-year starter, only a junior. He'll be back next year. Bad news for the rest of the Nezcat group. Bobby Mamoron, a great game manager as well is the athletic moves we've seen running and throwing the ball. And there he goes again. He's going to pump fake, roll, throws, incomplete. And the big fella <laughs> knock, knocked him out of bounds. Jovan Nendov Nendovich ran him out of bounds. 
and he's been a force to be reckoned with. And when Mamoran has had pressure, it's been Nendokovic. Pick number nine, reigning NESCAC Defensive Player of the Year, is not making life easy for Bobby Mamoran. So here's a second and long now. Twin receivers to the top of the formation. Here's the snap. Mamoran's going to throw to Stolen. Stolen makes a nice catch, stretched out. Pass was not that good one, I'm thinking. Sure, babe, uh, Bobby will say, sorry about that. Thanks for bailing me out, because that was not a good throw. But Stola, and there's those great hands that Mark Raymond talked about with me yesterday on the telephone. Nice catch. Picks up about six, so now you got, you know, third and four. That goes incomplete. You got third and ten. An interesting play. See what Coach Raymond decides to have his offense do. Mamoran takes the snap, hands it to Vaughn. Vaughn's wrapped up, but keeps the legs going. Close to a first down. I'm going to have him a little bit short. No, they're saying first down. They're going to move him. I don't know. Boy, if I'm Tufts. Boy, if I'm Tufts, I want a measurement on that. That was too close to move him that quickly, but they're moving him. So it's going to be first and ten. And the Eves just keep turn, churning away on offense. A great game so far from the senior captain, Jeffrey MacArthur, number 52. You'll see him snapping the ball here as our center today. Fantastic job defending Mamoron so far. In the trenches, doesn't get as much credit as some of his teammates like Stoller Mamoron, but fantastic game from big number 52. Mamoron throws right on the button to Stola. Stola breaks a tackle, trips out of bounds, and another big catch. From Frank for Frank Stola, and he's having a monster game here today. No, this should be putting the rest of the NESCAC on notice that number three is not to be trifled with. Fantastic game so far from our junior receiver. So first and ten, and don't look now, but the Eves are all the way down inside the 30 to the 27-yard line. Mamoron rolls out to the left. Mamoron goes back to the right. Pump fake. Mamoron's going to take off. Mamoron's across the stick and out of bounds. Picks up a couple yards across the back stick. That's some Mamoron magic right there, turning what looks like it's going to be a sack in the backfield into a gain of a couple yards. And he had 6'3", 220, big Jovan. Nendokovic chasing him again. He's an absolute menace in this Tufts defensive line. One of the few bright spots in their defensive game today. Nendokovic, he's been all over the field. Very impressive. The big guys that wear small numbers, I like them. They look so much even bigger. With how this guy's playing, <laughs> we might have to throw him at wide receiver and maybe Tufts will be able to get something going. I, he might, you know, I'll tell you. Second and seven as Mamoron got three. Mamoron with a fake is going to throw and it's out of the reach of Justin Nelson, Nelson 5'11 from Brandon, Mississippi, ran it out, and Mamoron threw it way out. So it was incomplete. So third down, so here's another big play for the Jumbos. If they could stop him and hold him, they would love to see on the next play Schreibstein kicking from this far away. Not an extra point, obviously, because that would be a touchdown. But they love to see him having a long field goal attempt. Interesting development in that last play as well. The Eves offense actually pulled cornerback Ethan McCullough out onto the field. Here's Mamoron. He's going to throw the end zone for Stola. Touchdown! And there it is. The fourth touchdown of the day for Frank Stola. And congratulations, Purple Cow. Frank Stola, a single game individual record. Four touchdown receptions for Frank Stola. We're witnessing history, and Williams has a lot of it. This is an old place. That is absolutely fantastic from Stola. You are seeing some magic from number three. That is the record for touchdowns caught in the game. That is right there with the career record by any receiver in Williams College history for touchdowns, and he is only a junior. Stola is an absolute wizard on the field, one of the best to be able to wear the purple and gold over here in Williamstown. So Stribstein bangs it through once again, automatic Andrew. And now let me tell you, uh, so now Stola is tied for career touchdown passes with that catch because we talked to uh, sports information director during the half, Frank uh, Dick Quinn, and I want to thank Dick for the information. Four, three was a tie for the uh, 
for the wow. single game. Single game, so he broke that. And the next one, he was one short of the career record, so now he's tied with that. It's crazy to so think about. His next touchdown, Petra, we're going to see another record broken. How cool is that? Exactly. Wow. We are still early this in the third coolness. quarter. We could see another record broken by Stola today. Can that be in the record books that Rick Sassone and Matt Freitas were on the call? Can I think we, it should can, be. Can we ask Rick and say be. these guys were on the call? Wow. I think he actually did that because we were calling the game I, today. There you go. Well, I told him. I, he was my color guy. He was right here with me last year doing a lacrosse game. And he, oh, he was so excited about that lacrosse. Was, you know, to see Ben Anthony and Carl uh, Horahan play, his teammates. Nothing like seeing your teammates out on the field, oh, even in a different yeah. sport. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're, you're doing, witnessing it right here. Absolutely. So Stribstein's going to put the toe into the leather. Low line drive kick. Andre's going to have a chance. Andre from the one. Andre's up across the 10, gets a block across the 20, bang down at the 26-yard line. So he actually ran into his own man there once to hit that 25-yard line, but the East defense were able to take him down on the rebound as he was trying to recover. So first and 10 for the Jumbos, 41-8. to eight. And I think we were talking during the halftime break, the three of us, with our uh, you, my, myself, and uh, Jeff Vasilio, our producer, about uh, we didn't see this coming uh, because, wow, uh, Tufts uh, put it on Trinity last week. It was a, yeah. the winner of the conference last year. So, so in surprising fashion. Last week, Tufts were able to get their first win over Trinity since 2011. Wow. This game today could mark, if it stays the way that it's going right now, Williams' first win over Tufts in the past, I believe, six years. So freshman quarterback Trevon Wills, uh, Trevon, uh, I should say, uh, Woodson is in the game. High snap. Woodson's going to take it. Woodson's going to take off. Woodson's wrapped up by purple jersey. He's got a yard. So it's going to bring up a third and long. The Eves are bringing number 28. Freshman outside linebacker Chaz Cotton onto the field. See if the freshman will be able to make an impact in this game. Currently 41 Williams, 8 Tufts. Third and nine now, big play for the freshman. Trayvon Woodson got a little bit of playing time last week. He came in relief. We haven't got any word about Jacob Carroll, who was just a quarterback switcher. There's an ailment with Carroll. Woodson drops. Woodson holds that ball an awful long wow. time, spins out. What a move. What another move. And he gets out across the first down, so a good run by Trayvon Woodson. Obviously a tough Tough gain for that East defense there. Great run by the quarterback, but something to say about the secondary. Not letting anything go in the back. Number 21, Josh Wax, the freshman, doing a great job making sure that nobody was thrown deep to his side of the field. Woodson at quarterback has Pedrini in the backfield with him. Fake to Pedrini, throws out to the flat. O.J. Anderson with a move, a burst of speed out over the 45. All the way out to the 49, first and 10, and the Jumbos are in hurry-up mode now, down 41-8. to eight. A lot of time left. Well, they got across midfield. They actually spotted it on the 49 of Williams. A couple more yards than I thought he got. Here's Woodson. Woodson gives to Pedrini. Pedrini cuts up. Nice cut, but boy, right there. Wow, Big TJ number Rothman. 45. T.J. Rothman, you're on it, man. That is a mean linebacker right there out of Norwell, Massachusetts. They breed them tough in the South Shore. <laughs> and freshman strong safety came up to get a lick in. Drew Mahalik. Second and eight after the gain of two. Back to throw is Woodson. Woodson's going to go deep and air it out. And the throw is over the head of Frank Roche. Pass went a little deep, but Josh Wax, the freshman corner, making it tough on that pass from for the Tufts offense. So Wax pulling up his leg gear right there, step by step, step for step with the graduate assistant, the graduate student, I should say, Frank Roche. It's a tough assignment to draw in your first year, your first ever home game, but he, Wax has been doing a great job on Roche. The guy's like five years older than him, right? <laughs> he's a graduate student, he's a freshman. <laughs> so there's Woodson. Woodson's going to get pressure. Woodson gets out of it. Woodson rolls across the 50s, out of bounds, forced out of bounds by Ian Devine, sophomore out of Pelham, New York, Fordham Prep, high school, 6'1", 250. Big fellow is coming with a load of steam. He's got his hands on his hips, 
sucking some oxygen after that run. <laughs> Look at him bending over. <laughs> Might be fella. time for a little break for the big guy. <laughs> yeah, the big fella ran a long way. <laughs> Chased the quarterback out of bounds. Okay, it's fourth down now. Fourth and seven. Tufts is going for it. They definitely uh, need this drive. Smart move by Savetti. I don't like this, though, for them. I mean, it doesn't look good because if they don't get it, there's O.J. Anderson on the money. What a throw. First down, O.J. Anderson. And down to the 37-yard line, and that'll move the stick. So fourth down. I was a little concerned if they didn't get it. It might have been curtains, but they keep the drive alive. Plenty of time left if you're just tuning in. Williams, you see the score, 41-8. to eight. It's been dominating. A great play there by number three, O.J. Armstrong. Can be seen as an undersized wide receiver at only 5'9", 155. But the Miami product has looked sharp today, especially... There goes Padrini down the sideline. Padrini has a run, broke out of it inside the 15. And they're in business. So great he, play by Pedrini. You though. were saying, sir, he ran yeah, out. Just great play by Armstrong so far, able to get a couple extra yards at the end of that tackle. But, I mean, let's move on to that Pedrini play right there. The senior captain getting a big play to push uh, Tufts down into the red zone. Best rush of the game so far by a running back. Petrini's going to get it again. Petrini's slow developing play as the Eves are in the backfield and wrapped up. And finally, number 56, Drake Mead. The big guy from Morristown, New Jersey, said, that's enough, I'm taking you down. And Drake Mead also did a color game lacrosse with me up here. Really? Too. Yeah, Drake Mead. Drake Mead and Frank Stola. Now I'm going to add uh, Matt Freitas to the list. There we go. Angela Vecarelli, basketball player, did a field hockey game with her. So I'm always, always uh, very excited to work with Williams College students. You guys are awesome. Much appreciated. No, you're welcome. Super happy to be here. You're welcome. Happy to have you. So here's Woodson. Padrini straight ahead. Hole. Had a hole there. Close pretty quick. Got maybe a yard. It's going to bring up third down. You see Ian Devine coming back onto the field after that big tackle across the field earlier in this drive. Think he got some oxygen over here? I hope he did. <laughs> a couple deep breaths for the big man. Warm day today, right, for mid-September, late September? No, that can honestly play a really big impact in this game. Coming into fall football, you expect it to be a little colder than this, but we're hitting temperatures about 80 degrees today. Yeah. A little too hot up in the press box. I don't know what it's like down wearing shoulder pads and helmets. Oh, it's warm down there. That, that artificial surface gets warm. So Woodson, Woodson, one-step drop. Woodson in trouble. Woodson going to go down. No, Woodson wow. escapes. Holy smokes, what a move by Trayvon Woodson. Woodson thought he was down. So now it's fourth down, so I guess they're going to go for it. I I think they have to at this point. Would you kick kick the field goal and make it a 30-point game? I guess not. Now, so, after seeing that little bit of magic from Woodson already converting on a fourth down earlier in the drive, I think you got to put some faith in number 19 here. Fourth and five. Woodson looks to throw. Woodson's going to go. Woodson's got the first down and inside the five, and Woodson towards the goal line, and Woodson lost the football. Woodson lost the football, and the Eves say they have it. The purple guys do. The cows take over. Wow. Eve's defense standing strong deep in their own red zone, forcing the second turnover of the game for the freshman quarterback. Well, I mean, I'll, you can't get much closer than that. He got all the way down to the one and coughed it up. So the Eves will take over first and 10 from their own one. And I see some congratulations and head smacks over here. Number 16, Drew McCulloch. The freshman's strong safety out of Marietta, Georgia, so I don't know if he forced the fumble or came up with it, but he did something good because everybody likes it. Fifth turnover of the game for this Tufts offense slash special teams today, but the East defense have been able to kill it with these turnovers. And you're going to see the, the defense go down and sit down here to our left and huddle up. So, boy, they've played a great game, this defense. So May Moran going to come in now, 41-8 to eight lead. you got to like... Play an offense like that and straight ahead. Can't see who the ball carrier was. I don't know if it was Horahan or Vaughn. Have to get the number when we come up. And it was Vaughn, so Vaughn went straight ahead. I don't think Vaughn's, it was Nicholas, wasn't it? 23. I believe it was Joel Nicholas there. Yeah, it was Joel Nicholas. Yeah, Vaughn's not even in the game. Now, after giving up a safety last week against Trinity next week, last week, 
Tufts might be looking for some revenge and trying to get Mamron down in the end zone, get themselves back into this game with a safety. So here's Mamron now. Second down, second and eight after the two-yard game by Nicholas. And there goes Mamron, big, nice read as he took it out of the belly of Joel Nicholas and went ahead for a first down, so they're going to move the sticks. That's big for Mamron. He's going to have some space to work now in the backfield once he drops back if they go into a shotgun formation. 41 to 8, 435. Left to go here in the third quarter. You're watching Nezcac football on the Northeast Sports Network. Beautiful Saturday afternoon. No clouds in the sky, like Matt said earlier, the leaves starting to turn a little. Mamoron, first and 10 snap. And he's gonna keep it again. Muscles his way in. Yeah, I'll tell you, keep the legs going, was thrown ahead. A little bit, gained some yardage. So Matt, Freitas, let's talk about you, lacrosse player here, freshman. Where are you from? I'm from Weymouth, Massachusetts, just okay. about 20 minutes south of Boston. Oh, so not that far. Not far enough to be away from home, but close enough to go back. Exactly. About right. three hours from here. Yeah, about three hours. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's a good time. Hiding you know? out in the mountains a little bit? Yeah, you know, we were able to get out, got over to Stone Hill, got some nice views, had a little bonfire there with my orientation group. Good. So just good. loving the Berkshires so far. Awesome. Best, best to you here at Williams. So Mamoron with a little fake and a jump back throwing to Stola. Stola makes the adjustment and makes the catch. What a catch, but it may not. He was out of bounds, so I don't know if it's going to count. If he established himself back in, it may count it, but he stepped out of bounds. And it's and they, they, he's going to be good, I think, because he got back in. So, wow, what a catch. Frank Stola is showing why he might be one of the best receivers in the NESCAC this year. That's unbelievable catch. I think they got the spot wrong, too. They're spotting it where he stepped out. It doesn't make sense. He went out there on the way down, but he caught it way down here. I don't know, first and 10 on the 38-yard line, their own 38-yard line, are the Eves. They lead on the scoreboard 41-8. to eight. Straight ahead's Vaughn, big hole. Boy, the big fellas up front opening up that hole. Big number, 65, Terry Zaff, the freshman. You know, in game planning for this Eves offense, Coach Savetti has got to be scared because, one, you can get a lot of rushing yards from these running backs, but you got to be scared of Mamoron running as well. These read option runs can be really tough to yeah. guard against. In, in getting on that, and I'm glad you mentioned that, it leads in perfectly to something I was thinking earlier. Mamoron's very skillful at these reads. He makes It seems like he makes the right read almost every time. Exactly. Mixed with his play-action skill so far, we've seen a couple of deep passes off of that. You know, it's a, tough, it's a tough offense to guard against. So there's another read. Look at that. Right on cue, Bobby. Thank you. Making the announcers look good. There's a read right there. Put it in the belly of Vaughn. Pulled it out and took off for a first down. He just knew we wanted to see one of those again. Ah, boy, I'll tell you. So first and ten. Inside tough territory. The 42-yard line is the yard line. It's on the near hash. Mamoron. Bobby, at quarterback, has been stellar today. There's the handoff. Vaughn goes, oh, no, the fake. He's faking me out. I don't know if that's hard to do, but I'm surprised by it. What a play action. Put it in the belly of, and I'm telling you, that's the key. And I was watching a game the other night, and I can't remember what it was, and I want to say, I, I, you know who it was? It was the Cleveland Browns, Baker Mayfield. And he was not faking good. He was not, even at the National Football League level, you got to sell these fakes. you got to. Absolutely. You can't just like, you know, sometimes they're nine feet away, and they're just like, dude, sell the fake. Put the ball in his belly and pull it out. You gotta be you gotta be ready to take the hit if possible, and it looks like number two has been ready this entire time. So there he goes, Mamoron rolling out behind the line of scrimmage, still fakes it, Ooh. little side steps. He's got positive yards, goes out of bounds. Great move by Mamoron. You saw number twenty-four, Kyle Horahan, goes out as a receiver looking to catch that ball and turns right around to get a nice block to make sure it's only a one-on-one -on -one in the open field for Mamoron. In the senior out of Temecula, California, Greg Holt. Needs to pick up an undergarment that he dropped on that play. 
Wow, what a fake by Bobby Mamoron. Absolutely. Great move by the quarterback. And that's something little. I mean, that's either an incomplete pass, he throws it away, or a loss of yardage. He picks up four. Now it's third and six. Very manageable with almost a minute left to go here in the third quarter. Mamoron now rolls to the left. Mamoron's going to throw on an arrow to Stola. And Stola wow. just took it away wow. from the defensive back. Oh Number 24 gosh. was there. Michael Maghetto was there from Verona, New Jersey, and Frank Stola just said, that's my ball, I'm taking it away. Frank Stola was not letting anybody take his lunch money today. What just snatches it right out of his hands on that play. What an incredible, incredible game. We really are watching wow. history with number three today. I, I can't believe two spectacular, spectacular catches in a row by Frank Stola stealing the show. Wow. Unbelievable as the third quarter winds down. We're going to throw. Looking for Stoll in the end zone. Oh, oh he almost makes a one hit catch. goodness. And back there was a coverage. If he wow. capped that drive off with that. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I'll i tell you, I've seen a lot of football games covered a lot. I just, uh, uh, what a what a individual performance uh, by Frank Stola today is is unbelievable and we still have 15 minutes and 21 seconds left of football uh, unbelievable you know they took stall out of the game he has been absolutely grinding in this drive so it's been tough for him but let's see if number 13 justin nelson can make a big play here so second and 10 now they can get a first down balls at the 11 so just around the one and there goes mamaron He's going to carry, and he just carries wow. defenders. And he's Black got a face down. mask. Yep. It's going to be a half the distance to the goal penalty. So it's going to be a face mask, I believe, and it is. And Stoll is coming back out as well. It's going to be first and goal for the Eves, and the Eves are just, I, I, I just can't think of, uh, any other adjectives to use besides domination today? It's the best way to put it. That last penalty on Quinn Fav, the junior from Darien, Connecticut. You know, that was just a tough play when they're getting down low into the, uh, into the red zone there. You're just trying to do your best to make the tackle, and he grabbed the face mask. So we're down here at the end of the third quarter. Eves up 41-8 to eight over the Tufts University Jumbos. We'll see how this fourth quarter pans out. 41-8, to eight, Nezcat football on the Northeast Sports Network. The Eves all over the Jumbos. Welcome back to Williams College, and they made the announcement. We got word from the information department, a career single-game receiving record, 233 yards, Frank Stola. Absolutely insane. Stola might just be putting up the best single-game performance from a Williams College wide receiver ever. One of the most dominant performances by an athlete. They're throwing a Stola for the record, and it's incomplete. And the record would be career touchdown receptions. He already has the single game at four today. He has the single yards at 233. And once again, only a junior. And not only is he only a junior, this is only the second game of the year in his junior season. So really, he's a little more than halfway through his football career. Exactly. Wow. It's great because you'll see, same grade as his quarterback, Bobby Mamoron. They have worked on an amazing relationship, fantastic chemistry throwing the ball. And they still have over an entire year left of being that one-two punch for wow. this Eves team. Wow, it, incredible. 
In incredible championship run. I, I see it. They're throwing to the Stola again. There's a pass, and he caught it. Touchdown. No, he's out of bounds. He couldn't get the one foot down. That's close. So Mamoron, I was waiting for those arms to get up. I became a fan there for a second. <laughs> you know, honestly, at this point, you just got to root for number two and number three. They're having an amazing game. And I'll tell you, fans, if you're a young Williams College East football fan and you want to get a jersey, two or three might be a good numbers to pick. Absolutely. So here we go, third and goal now. I, I think they're going to throw it to him again. Based off the flow of this game so far, I don't see why you throw it to anyone else. And Mamoron hands it to Vaughn, who's wrapped up, and Mamoron comes out of the pack a little maimed, limping a little bit, and that's going to bring on the field goal unit. You've got to give it to Shrivestein, let him bang it through. The kid deserves it. We'll see if uh, Shrivestein can keep his perfect day going so far. Andrew Stribstein, right? Uh, what's he got? Two field goals and six extra points? Five extra points? I believe so. Two for two and five for five. Five for five. Five extra points. 35, yep. So 5-11. Scored 11 points today. I want this guy on my fantasy team. I, yeah, right? Imagine him having him stole as stole a wide receiver and Stribstein is a kicker today. Oof. 41 for the Eves. Looking to add Another three here as they call timeout. And I did get some scores earlier. Uh, Amherst was ahead of Colby, 24-10. to 10. There was about 10 minutes left to go in the fourth there. At the start of the fourth quarter, Middlebury, the Panthers all over the Bobcats. Cat fight there. Well, really, not really. 28 nothing. Middlebury leads. Trinity all over the Polar Bears, 40 to nothing. 7-22 in the third. And Wesley and the Cardinals over the Hamilton Continentals, 21 to 10. 11 minutes and 30 seconds was left in the fourth. Those, this score's probably a little further along. I got those a while ago at the end of our half. Those games a little bit ahead of us. Uh, so they, some of them may be finals uh, because they all kicked at 1. We kicked at 1.30 today. Yeah, you got to say We're the primetime game. We kicked course, at 1.30. Of course. Yeah. It's a great bounce back game for the Bantams as well after losing the Tufts. Yep. And the kick is up and good. So... Tri Schreibstein continues his Dominance. perfect day. Schreibstein himself has put up more points on this entire Tufts University team. I, then, even than Stolen. Stolen has, what, four touchdowns? Yeah. Six is tw uh, it's 24. No. Stolen has four touchdowns? Yeah, he's got 24. Yes. Okay, 24 so Stola. points for Stola. And uh, nine and five, 14 for Schreibstein. Unbelievable. It, that, that's... I mean, Stola, 24, and what I say, 15, 39 points. 39 of the 44 points are either Stola or, right? Wow. It's incredible. Now, there's one touchdown I've been around, so 38, 38 of them. Just about. Come on, you're the NESCAC student. You've got to be better at the math than me. I'm a political science guy, man. Oh. I'm not about this math Okay. <laughs> Don't make me count things. Oh, boy. So, Schreibstein's going to kick off, and Andre's... Back deep, John Andre. We're just about ready to go. 14-17, the fourth quarter, 44-8. to eight. Got to be careful with John Andre in the back. Always oh. dangerous for a big return. Absolutely. Mines will run it out. Now he's going to take a knee about four yards deep. And the Tufts University Jumbos will put the ball in play. First and ten. For the 25 years old. No, you get to the point in this game where you think, is Coach Raymond going to put in more of the backups into this game to maintain the health of his starters? We might end up seeing a different quarterback in this game, but right now we can still see plenty of captains and starters out in the field, like number four, the senior captain, Ben Anthony. So first and ten, the Tufts will take over after the touchback. Woodson hands off. It's Padrini. Padrini goes and bounces into somebody and then around the outside. I think that's still Petrini in the game. No, tw number 22, and that is Andrew Sanders. So Sanders got about two yards, maybe a long, short two. Let's call it a long eight. Second and a long eight now for Woodson in the Jumbos. Woodson drops. Woodson looks, throws. Wide open O.J. Anderson. Armstrong. Armstrong has the first down 
gets across the 40, so good pickup, about 15 yards or there so by O.J. Armstrong. Armstrong, 5'9", 155, could flat out fly. Had 14 catches, 165 yards, and a touchdown last year in his sophomore year. He's coming off a great game in that first game of the season, four receptions, 66 yards. There's another nice throw by Woodson. He hits Brandon Dolan, the junior. You know, I got to say, Woodson was thrown into a tough situation here, but he has stayed poised and made some great throws and made some great runs. Well, it really, I mean, with the, with the if he didn't fumble at the one-yard line, if he could have got in the end zone, he would have really shown that uh, he's, he's moving the team ahead. So he actually has. Uh, they don't have anything on the scoreboard to show for it, but a nice drive last time, and Woodson drops back again. Woodson feels pressure. Woodson's going to take off. Woodson has a first down. Wow, great open field tackle by Jarrett Westner on that East defense. I'll tell you, yeah, Woodson had a, a, a lot of momentum and a lot of run, and Westner made the open field tackle like you said matter. It would have been a lot more yardage. So into Williams' territory are the Jumbos. It's first and 10 on the 43-yard line. Trayvon Wilson in the game for Jacob Carroll, and there goes Woodson again. Woodson's got a lot of room. Woodson's across the 30. Steven Kletcher making some pressure in the backfield, but Woodson's able to get away. Woodson carries to the 29 yard line. So Woodson putting on a little bit show, little show. And Jacob Carroll left the game for the Jumbos, and we're not sure if it was just a, a personnel change. I, we're thinking it was because of the flow of the game. You would think, here's Woodson throwing deep, looking for the end zone, and he overthrows Roche. Frank Roche was out there, maybe he had a step, but uh, incomplete. So that'll bring up a second and 10. And, man, I'm looking at the stats here, and uh, Woodson now has 61 yards rushing. He's the leading rusher for the Tufts Jumbos, which when your backup freshman quarterback comes in as a leading rusher, it's not a good sign. No, absolutely not. But, I mean, Mamoron's out here with 102 yards rushing, and Woodson is playing a lot less game time. You know what? And there's a pass to complete to Sanders. And Sanders stood wow. up right there, Ben Anthony. Ben Anthony says, boom, I'm going to stand you right up in front of your teammates on the sidelines. Wow, Anderson, you know, Sanders made the catch look like he was going to go for more, and Ben Anthony said, no. That's a big muscle play from number four right there. <laughs> and all, Showing why he's the captain of this defense. You know, muscle play, it was all high strength. It was all upper body strength. It was incredible, incredible play by Anthony. So 44-8, to eight, wow. Here's a pass. Woodson looks back. Woodson's going to take off. Woodson puts his head down, gets a few yards. It's going to be fourth down. So now here's another fourth, big fourth down. And the last fourth down, they were able to get it. But what's it fumbled, so. Yeah. You saw a nice mixed tackle right there from Manzella and from Ben Anthony, both having great games so far. So big fourth down play. Any kind of semblance of getting close in the score, Tufts needs a first down here. Woodson drops. Woodson's going to get pressure. Woodson cannot escape this one. He's wrapped up, and he's going to go down, and the Jumbos will take over, and we got an injured player, an injured Eve on the ground. A big fella, slow to get up. So the training staff's going to go out there. Ian Devine injured on the Ian Devine, I saw him get wrestled down. He was tangled up with a blocker, and he got wrestled down. So they'll attend to Divine. We'll see. We'll stay right here, see if he gets off. It looks like he's starting to get up, and there is the big fella. He gets up. Great sign that he's able to get up and walk off. Fantastic game from Divine so far. The sophomore defensive lineman from Fordham Prep. Sometimes those big fellas just might be tired, man. They do so much work and so much hard work down there in the trenches, and he's certainly been a force on that defensive line today, and it's good to see him get up and walk off under his own power. Absolutely. We've seen him flying across the field, not even just staying in the trenches, making open field tackles. So tough loss for the East defense. We'll see if he ends up coming back in this game. But regardless, great game from number 93. So the Eves take over, and we have a new quarterback in the game. 
Jack uh, Bischopping. The sophomore quarterback from Suffield Academy out of Palo Alto, California, going across the country for his, for his high school and for his college. And there's a big open hole for Vaughn as Vaughn rumbles from the 23 all the way out across the 40, and it's going to be a first down, actually just short of the 40. They spot it on the 39. So Bischopping comes in for one play and goes out as Bobby Mamoron comes back in. So that was very bizarre. I don't know. Could Maybe Bobby had to tie his shoe or something. We or, don't know. Or use the restroom or not find his helmet or something. That was weird. <laughs> I thought I, I thought with the score they were going to keep uh, Bischopping, in, Bischopping in there. But Mamoran's back in with Vaughn in the backfield. First and ten after the Vaughn run. There's another handoff. Vaughn goes straight ahead. Piled up two yards ahead. It'll be second and eight. We saw Bischoff and come onto the field earlier. The sophomore has had a bit of play time in his career. He has five touchdowns and five interceptions on the career with over 400 yards passing. So Wow, really? Okay, yeah, so he's played a little bit. Absolutely, and I mean, by the time Mamoron reti uh, retires, after he graduates, <laughs> we can see Bischoff and getting some substantial playing time. Right. So clock's moving there. You see 920 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Bobby Mamoron at quarterback, second and eight for the Eves. And there's a steady dose of Vaughn wow, straight ahead of him. tackle. Yeah, right there, number 54, Greg Holt. And I got on Holt earlier about dropping a piece of his undergarment on the fake out. Making up for it there. Made it up for it right there, yeah. Vaughn. It's a double like takedown in wrestling terms. So the Eves really getting on. And Frank stole out of the game down here in front of us. Uh, on the bench, getting a well-deserved hydration break. Stola, 288 yards or 233? 233. 233. 233. When he set the record, individual Four touchdowns. Williams record. So Vaughn goes straight ahead. I wonder where that stands in the uh, conference records. Uh, yeah, I wonder. I'm sure somebody's probably got 300, maybe, but uh, close to. But I bet you he's got to be in the top five, probably. Top, probably up there. 233 yards. Uh, receiving is uh, a very good game, Frank Stola, only a junior. So 8.17 left to go. I don't think I'm being presump presumptuous when I say that uh, Williams is probably going to go to 1-1 one and, one and the Tufts going to drop to 1-1 one and one unless... Uh, Miracles happen here, but I just uh, the way the game's been going, it's just unbelievable from the start. If you didn't see the opening on the second play from scrimmage inside their own 20, Tufts turned it over. Williams was able to cash in. And then the big special teams play, the mishap on the snap, punt snap, and uh, Williams took over on the two-yard line, punched it in. Those were two big plays in the game, and then Stola has just been on fire. So John Andre standing back on his own 15-yard line. As Shrivestein comes in the punt. Great nice punt. kick. Wow. Andre's going to go all the way back to his own five to feel that, and he's going to get wrapped up. He gets out. Oh. There goes Andre. Andre's got some space, and... He was wrapped up. The Eves had him, but Andre slithers out past the 15 to the 20. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Jumbos with four, uh, 8.03 left to go in the fourth quarter. Boy, 44 to 8. Despite the great return there, you can see Schreibstein's absolute domination in this game, even going towards his punting unit team. He launched that thing down within the 10-yard line. Great return by Andre, but kicking and punting today well, has been great. Yeah, exactly. It had to be a great return because it was a fantastic punt. It was a great punt, great return. And just good football. Empty backfield now for uh, Woodson. Woodson's going to throw. He's got a complete, he completes a receiver, throws it on a rope. And that's number 80. First catch of the game, Wilton Blount. We can see number 25, Luca Puzzi, slow to get up, still on the ground here. 
so it, senior captain. It was, excuse me, Blount's uh, second reception of the game. He did have one in the first. So Luca Puzzi down on the turf. We hope this is nothing serious, and it looks like it's a cramp, so that's good. When you always see that stretch where they grab the foot and put it back, it's a cramp. So that's a good sign. A, good, a cramp is good. Not that it's not painful and not that you don't like to see someone down. but No long-term injury. It, absolutely. It's a cramp. Get some uh, potassium, eat a couple bananas, drink some water, and, and he'll be good. So that's uh, we're not uh, – probably shouldn't speculate, but what usually when you see him uh, stretch the leg back like that, uh, it is a cramp. and. Uh, it looks like they're massaging it out a little bit. Now he's drinking water. See, he's drinking water already. He's on the ground drinking water. That's a good sign. Absolutely. If you got a serious injury, you're not drinking water. That's the last thing you're, you know. So Apuzi gets up. So uh, he's going to walk off under his own power. So that's a good sign. So uh, He's been a leader of this East secondary all day. You can see him getting a huge round of applause from the East supporters in the stands. It's along a great-looking crowd today. This is a great-looking crowd on a beautiful day. This is beautiful here. Look at the people here. Down Lots below, you can't see it at home. Yeah, You can't see us at home. I mean, uh, the, the other side, the Tufts, people that made the trip over from Medford, uh, not too many of them. And they were tailgating earlier today when I parked. I parked next to a group. They had some goalposts set up and a table and some cocktails. Uh, and it's just a great, great atmosphere here at Williams College. So Woodson's going to drop back. Woodson's going to have to step up from the pressure. Woodson throws and complete has a receiver. It's Roche. Roche breaks a tackle. Roche is inside the 20, the 10. Touchdown. Oh, we got a flag on the play behind the play. And tied up was O.J. Armstrong and Chaz Cotton from Los Angeles. They were tied up behind the play, and the flag was dropped, and O.J. Anderson was pointing at Cotton. But who knows what that is. If if, if it's on An Armstrong, I'm uh, sorry, I keep saying O.J. Anderson. Uh, if that was on O.J. Armstrong, and it, it is, what a blunder. What a horrible penalty by O.J. Armstrong behind the play. Roche was just about in the end zone when he committed that foul. I don't think that was a necessary penalty at all. I think he still would have made it in. Oh, Hawks absolutely. Was in pursuit, but I don't know. And I don't know what the, what did they call? I didn't hear it. It wasn't a blocking penalty. I think it was like roughness or something. I do think it was. Oh, rough, block, rough black in the block. Okay, our pursuit, our, our producer Jeff Facilio, who we would be nothing without him. He keep us. He, he said it was blocking the back. Men. Oh man, thank goodness for him. And there goes Woodson for the first down. I mean, those of you at home got to put up with uh, Matt and I speaking. You don't see the the person who is really putting orchestrating this whole uh, broadcast. Uh, Jeff Facilio always does a great job. Of so glad to be working with him again. Did some baseball with him in the spring. Got to meet him out there and work with him in the Northeast Sports Network. Great to be doing the fall football. A little cool breeze blowing through the booth now. It's got to be great for those players down in the field as well. First and ten throw to Anderson. Or Armstrong is complete and Armstrong is going nowhere. Armstrong's going backwards. He's not going down in that play. Saw about three defenders come and try and tackle him. So there were finals. I did hear final Amherst beat Colby 24 to 10. So Amherst will now go to 2 and 0. Colby drops to 0 and 2, right? I believe so. They had a loss against Wesleyan last week, 30 to 10. So Woodson, Woodson going to drop? Woodson has all kinds of time. Throws and oh, is that going to be Was complete? That complete. He caught it, but he's out of bounds. So what a catch by Roche. Frank Roche, the graduate student who had the touchdown nelligated on the boneheaded penalty by O.J. Armstrong. Way behind the play. So it's third and nine. Here's Woodson. Woodson's going to throw a little screen out to Sanders and immediately wow. tackled. What a nice play. That's number 21, the freshman Josh Wax. Fantastic play. So Wax has been very active all day for the Eves. Absolutely. See him f fight off that block and make that tackle on the screen play. And it's fourth down, and the Jumbos are in trouble once again. It's not super common to see a first year making this form of an impact in the game, but 
He has been locked down in the secondary today. Fantastic job from number 21. Woodson back. Woodson dancing around. Ooh, big Woodson, block. <laughs> big block. I know you hear the oof from the crowd, but that's going to be it. No, to no prevail. So number wow. 75 with the pancake. Dylan Daisy. Big fella, 6'1", 265 out of Williamstown, New Jersey. Wow. Yeah. The fake Williamstown. The fake Williamstown. <laughs> so the ball gets turned over on downs, and unfortunately for the U Tufts University Jumbos, they don't get on the scoreboard. They scored a touchdown that was called back on the block in the back by O.J. Armstrong. And the Jumbos turn the ball over on downs. And now back in at quarterback is Bis chopping. Number eight. You know, it would make sense if Mamoron's day is done this late in the game. But we saw on that last drive, Bis chopping was in for just one play. And then Mamoron came back in. So we'll see what happens in the uh, coaching staff of the Williams Ecologies. Yeah. Paul Harshbarger. Freshman from Schuylerville, New York. Hey, by me. Schuylerville, about uh, 10 miles from my house. Really? Schuylerville, where I live now, yeah. So Schuylerville, New York. He's in at uh, wide receiver. Nelson's still in there. Number 22, Nick Landry. Is in the game getting some offensive reps. He's lifted as a defensive player, but he's in there as a fullback in the slot right now. From Falmouth, Massachusetts, uh, down in Cape Cod. I was going to say, not too far from your neck of the woods, right? Yeah. So here's a handoff straight wow. ahead, powering. Oh, Nicholas. Nicholas rushes to the 20. Timeout. Tough. So Tufts calls a timeout. Dan Vaughn's going to come back into the game along with number six, and that's Jake Moen. Senior listed as a free safety. So you're seeing uh, Mark Raymond getting some of the uh, defensive players in on offense a little bit. Always yeah, good. Absolutely. Especially with these younger guys, you might see them as they get older make a switch from either offense to D or D to O. So getting them this time now is just very valuable. For the Great guys. point. Great point. When you got the game, uh, the game is no longer in doubt. Uh, you got the game wrapped up. You got the W at home, your home opener. What a great point you make, Matt. You, you get them in there. Yeah, because next year they may say, well, I want to play wide receiver. Or we want you to play wide receiver. Exactly. And this is a great time. You can emulate game situation. So this is a great way to get a great barometer of what the players can do under, you know, real-life situations. Absolutely. Funny enough, lined up on the close side of the field to us, we actually have Will Cotter, who's listed on the roster as a quarterback. Well, there you go. The great block from 15 as Vaughn is able to get in for a big rush and a first down. So Cotter listed as a quarterback, 6'4", 205 from the Hackley School in New York City. As Matt said, is in the game. So Vaughn gets the first down. Four and a half minutes left. It's all Williams, 44-8 to eight over Tufts. Bis chomping in at quarterback. Jackson Bis chomping, the sophomore out of Palo Alto. California, Northern California over here on the East Coast. Big wow, hole powering Dan through. Vaughn. Keeping his legs moving, huh? Great hey. run. You know, a great part of this East offense today has been the fact that the rushers like Vaughn and like Mamoron have been able to make these runs that look like they're only going to be a zero or one yard gain up to a four or a five. And that has just been huge for this offense in making short yard situations on second and third down. Well put together game today. All around by the Eves, and they're going to even their record to one and one. Tufts is going to drop a game down to one and one. Bis chopping at quarterback in the shotgun. It really does just seem like they've won all the phases of the game. Wow. Oh, look at Nicholas. Wow, what a run to the outside. And he hopped over somebody going laterally. Oh my Joel Dude. Nicholas, the freshman out of Buffalo, New York. Moving upstate the chains. Western New Yorker. And the chains move again. And that was a really nice run by Joel Nicholas. But as I was saying earlier, it seems like the Eves have really won all four phases of this game, of this game offense, defense, special teams, and coaching. But 
excited to see what Tufts is able to do in the future. Coach Savetti has a great team over there, and they showed last week they're capable of really big things in the NESCAC. Yeah, very well said, Matt. All phases of the game, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Biss chopping at quarterback. It's first and 10 on the 45, so the Eve's still moving the ball. There goes straight ahead and pounded down as Nicholas. Nicholas carries for a loss, tackled by Fay. So Nicholas, the loss is back two yards, going to bring up a second and 12. As the clock continues to run, the sun is starting to go set a little bit, dipping into the Berkshires as we're getting late in the day on this beautiful, beautiful last day of summer here in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Leaves starting to change in the Hoosick River Valley here in Williamstown. Second and 12. Straight ahead is Joel Nicholas again, and he gets his two yards back, plus maybe one. It's going to bring up a third and nine. As we're looking forward to next week as well, Williams on Saturday has another home game taking on the Bowdoin College Polar Bears. One o'clock on Saturday. I will be back here for that broadcast. Tufts next week will be taking on Amherst at home. Uh, a one o'clock game as well for them. They'll be looking at what we assume will be a bounce back game. Right, right. And I will be on the road with the uh, Northeast Sports Network. I will be in Clinton, New York at Hamilton Steuben Field as the Hamilton Continentals will take on the Colby Mules. I'll be out there. Unless things could change, I may be, end up back here. I was originally scheduled here and they switched me over to Hamilton. Uh, two yards and it'll be fourth down. One yard and it'll be fourth down and Tufts will call a timeout. It's looking like Tufts will really be trying to drive and get the last couple of points on the board in this game. Sure, I mean, you can't stop. Uh, and like you said, I mean, they're doing the same thing, evaluating talent, uh, not only for the rest of this year. It's early in the season, a lot of season to go. And, you know, with Tufts beating Trinity, uh, you know, the, the, the NESCAC uh, champs last year, uh, the, the conference is wide open. Absolutely. As we see, Amherst is moving to 2-0 and after their big win against Colby today. But that doesn't mean that they have the conference locked up. Only two weeks into this young season, Williams made a big mark today. Tufts made a big mark last week, and we'll see what happens as we progress throughout this young year. And Middlebury beat Bates today, so Middlebury is now 2-0, and but Hamilton was losing. I think they lost. So Hamilton's now 1-1. One and one. Tufts is 1-1. One and one. Wesleyan won. So Wesleyan, Middlebury, and Amherst sit atop the desk at 2-0 and oh now. We'll see if Tufts can make life tough for that mammoth team as they, uh, as they take them on in Medford next week. Yeah, big game. So here's Schreibstein to kick it, and he punts it. Nice kick. It's going to be fielded wow. by the returner, who is not Andre. I don't know who came in, number 26. It's going to be Tyler Johnson, freshman. Yeah, so there, there you go. Getting a freshman, getting in there, getting a live punt return, which you, you I'm sorry, you just can't simulate. There's, there's certain sports that you cannot simulate. Football and hockey are two of the biggest because of the contact. Absolutely. You can't, you can't. It's you, not the same in practice. It's games. not the same, no. We saw that play by Johnson there being pursued very closely by Williams players, but didn't call a fair catch. Definitely an interesting call by him, but he was able to make the catch and take the hit. So Trayvon Johnson, who's come in in relief of Jacob Carroll hands the ball off and Tufts running a little hurry up offense which uh, you got to applaud that they don't have any timeouts left on the game so it would make a lot of sense if Tufts is going to try and punch something in before this game ends they'll be going hurry up for the last 40 seconds and Woodson back Woodson's going to take off and Woodson's going to be wrestled from behind and there's a toll holding penalty it's going to be on number 53 Great tackle by Charlie Gunter there at the freshman defensive end out of St. John's Prep in Massachusetts. Malk, Mark Mulvaney is in the hold. And it is Mulvaney, so that's going to come back. But, uh, you know, very interesting. Here's a freshman quarterback. Uh, Carroll is a senior, Jacob Carroll. So getting in some real game action, no timeouts, like you said, having to go a great distance in the field, might as well... Uh, practice absolutely get some good plays going maybe show some creativity here in the play call back to that last play though charlie ginta out of st john's prep with a great tackle he's coming off winning a super bowl in high school last year the massachusetts state championship wow, so, okay certified winner speaking of uh super bowl championships 
A uh, little controversy. Antonio Brown cut, huh? Wow, yeah. <laughs> Very, it's a, a tough time for the Patriots, but makes a lot of sense. I think he did deserve to be cut. I Absolutely. And you know Belichick isn't going to put up with – they don't need the distractions. Absolutely not. And that's how we end. As the clocks hit zero, Williams College, 44. Tufts University, 8. Williams College goes to one-on-one -on -one now in the NESCAC. Tufts falls to one and one And what a great day. Always a great broadcast. It was NESCAC football on the Northeast Sports Network. Rick Sassone here. I want to thank Matt Freitas. Great thank job, you for Matt. Having me. I Absolutely great it. working working with you. And I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Without you viewing us, we're not needed. And want to thank our, our producer Jeff Facilio, who was spot on, who kept us on point all afternoon, working behind the scenes. You just don't see what he does. Can't thank him enough. Once again, the final score from Farley Lamb Field: Williams forty-four, Tufts eight.